Timmy the trash can, and I love trash. Popcorn boxes, cups, and candy wrappers. Mmm, they all taste so good. Instead of throwing your trash on the floor, won't you please give it to me? Thank you for considering your fellow patrons. Welcome to the Tim Dillon Show, everybody. We are resuming regular video in 2020. I don't know how many times we have to say that. We know that everybody gets very angry. Video is coming back regular every week in 2020. People got to beat their meat. People got to fucking beat their meat. We get it. The It's too windy to shoot outside and too cold in California. So what we're doing is we're going to get a studio we're looking at a few. We're going to have one 2020. It's great. Do you, do you think you have a, not everyone, more even yeah. most people, but do you think you have a few people who, and look, some people might be attracted to you and jerk off to you for that reason. But I'm saying more like they like what you're saying and they're just getting into a frenzy, jerking off to, not, not sexually you, but just a feeling you're evoking. I would say that a, a, a fair amount of people listening to this show are such degenerates <laughs> and so lazy yeah. that they just do two things at once. <laughs> And they just jerk off and listen to the show. And right. it's like, it, it, one has nothing to do with the other. Yeah. I imagine a lot of people that listen to the show just spend a lot of their life in one position. I think I probably jerked off listening to O&A, but like watching porn, but having O&A right. in the background. Right, it's just, you, I've done things like that yeah. where you're like, I'm not jerking off to what's going on, but it's just time to, to get it out. Yeah. They're going to ban, people are talking about banning porn. What? There's a discussion. Who's talking about that? Somebody on Twitter. Nobody really. That's the thing. You would think like, yeah, the funny, there's no money in porn, right? Like someone's making money, but Yo, not there's, much. There's got to be something. There's, it's a billion. Is it still a billion? They always say it's a billion dollar industry. Is I that don't true know. anymore? I don't know. I know like- A lot the, of it's free. Yeah, you know, the big stars, they, you know, they have their, their version of Patreon, their webcam shit. Yeah. And like, you know- and you get you get a pair of their panties or whatever. It's all soiled. It's nice, but like, how do you know that from an article you've read? We had Wendy on. Yeah, years yeah. Ago. Okay, is and that uh, it? That's all from just that episode. I've never paid. I paid for porn a couple of times. Right. I never paid for like a garment or interaction even with people. Interesting. Um, I would love to pay for you to have an interaction, <laughs> only to watch it start. That only for you to be like, hello. I think I could pull. Hello? I think it would be amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy with Lucy. Are you Jasmine? But I think it would be interesting. I think she'd be behind it 100%. Yeah. For, to get me to try to pull a webcam girl. What do you mean pull a webcam? Like actually like uh, date her. Date a webcam girl. Start out paying. But oh, then, no. First of all, <laughs> it goes without saying. Yeah. Start out paying. But then, then yeah. like woo her. But you know, so a lot of people, a lot of people start out that is the fantasy right like the, oh, that's the whole hook yeah that's the whole <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what whores are about like yeah. not the whores i was seeing back in the day with but the good ones yeah is that like because they make you think that like you kind of like it right that way they kind of like it you, 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 into you, it. you like, think that one day yeah she's just gonna look at you and go hey put the money away yeah. <laughs> hey put that money away I just want you. And yeah. there was there was some documentary I was watching about a, a guy who has just been paying this webcam girl. And if you know what it is, you can tweet me or whatever, DM me. I forget what it was, but he was paying her for like years, mm. a lot of money. And then she went and spent a weekend with him and it was fucking weird <laughs> for both of them. Right. She was like, this is weird. And I don't, because they were so used to that digital relationship she even i think maybe wanted to try to give it a go well he's like how's school going oh you know my professor is like oh right. i went he probably like you know, i went to college and this and that and they had something in common maybe yeah or whatever like and it's just like yeah but that's different than like i mean look look you go on tinder you go on i don't know is there a gay tinder or is it just grinder there's all Doesn't kinds matter. of different point things. is yeah. you, you go on these dating apps and like you you strike up a rapport but like a fraction of those actually work well in the date. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, right. It's much easier. The barrier to entry is so much lower when you're just online. Right. And the idea that something could work. And then when you're with somebody and you're in their physical presence, it's much harder, especially for a prolonged period of time. Yeah. It's one thing. A weekend is a long period of time. Oh, that's insane. That's it's absurd. A, right. So it's like, you could go out to dinner, get hammered, but a fucking weekend. He should have played it like, hey, I'm going to be in town for the weekend. Maybe we'll get dinner. 
Not let's go have a weekend together. I and, for, like, yeah. and I'm saying, like, bye. But like, see if you can get something going. But the pressure for a weekend, that's crazy. Yeah, but that, so that's interesting. That, I had a girl, yeah, like, a, effectively do that after like a first date, but then she got mad because I wouldn't buy her groceries. What, when was this? Years ago. It was like, uh, but basically, she, she, I think she was trying to like, I don't think she had a good living situation. Uh, oh, I'm I'm certain she didn't. <laughs> I think she. Was, I would imagine she had a very sad living situation. She was sleeping in my bed with me. Yeah, but she didn't want to have sex yet. Okay. Um, she said she was on a period, which is all right. But then, but you know, eventually she let me jerk off like next to her. And this was one night. No, well, it was like a night that turned, it turned into a few nights. Oh, so she just really wanted a place to stay. I think so. And the furthest you got was jerking off next to her. Yeah. Well, that's romantic. <laughs> and did she, how was she, when you were jerking off next to her, was she laying down? Was she She was down? laying down next to me. Was she um, looking at you? She was like, in, yeah, she was, she was, she was engaged. Okay. Um, was she fully clothed? No, she had her top off. Okay. And, uh. But no touching. I could touch. I could touch. I can lick okay. her tits. You okay. know, I mean, sure. we, that, that was fair game. This was what, night three? Uh, she lived there for six months? No. I, I ended it quick because she was a liar. And <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I mean, hold the phone. Yeah. This woman was being dishonest, Raymond. She had a very dishonest vibe. She, she looked at you and she said, I'm going to get over on him. Right. And right. I felt that right away. Yeah. Um, it felt sketchy right away. And it was right. kind of thing. It was like, um, How does it feel sketchy right away? How do you you meet her on Tinder? I said, we met on Tinder, and she's like, um, we yeah, we were having a rapport back and forth. We actually got dirty right away. I think she, and she must have initiated because I wasn't the guy to go, hey, you want to see my dick? Right. But, you know, she, we were sending dick pics and stuff back and forth. And then she's like, uh, I think it was at school at the time or whatever. Uh, and um, I, we basically met up at uh, Applebee's. And... Uh, yeah, I guess we were trying. It wasn't the, the best date, but she's like, you want to go watch a movie at your place? And I'm like, sure, which is odd. I mean, for her, for on a first date, which is like we met for like half price apps kind of thing. It wasn't yeah. like a, a, we, we didn't have like a two and a half hour. And she was wowed by the half price apps. Right. I'm saying and she, she was, initiated the movie at your place. I knew it was like, this seems quick. Right. So I was like, but you know, I, this is the time when I was running. And I was, you know, five miles a day and I was like in better shape. So, you know, maybe she just wants some pipe. Right. Um, maybe not. I mean, I could fuck. I still can fuck. But I'm saying, like, I was, you know, it, it, it's possible. I'm not a bad looking guy in that moment. Yeah. And, uh, but it, it raised a flag. And then we get back to my place. We watch, I think that Joan Rivers doc. Uh, oh, that piece of work. Yeah. The comedy doc. Yeah. And then we ended up, she, like, we ended up like, she slept I over love her. Wanting to go to your home is a red flag. Well, like that raised a flag. Well, it's just very quick. It wasn't like we. Usually, right. Here's the usually in my experience, maybe if you have a a, a great jawline and a, and a great body, it's a yes. little more quick. But it's like you know, you're hanging out, you're building rapport. You, you know, usually we're drinking, but not like no one's getting yeah. super drunk. We're drinking, and you kind of kind of right. And usually a few hours goes you're by. You're hanging out. A van pulls up. <laughs> you got a few people in there. You put her in there. It's a practical joke. You explain to her that it's a joke. Everything is happening is a joke and that she's going to be okay. And it's okay. And you just say, these are your friends and they help you move and you got a moving business on the side. <laughs> and then you put her in the van and then you explain to her that it's for her own good that you've restrained her right. because people could get hysterical and she could hurt herself. <laughs> you just you just don't want her to hurt herself. <laughs> so I understand that your usual process, no, notwithstanding. It's a, usually is a little more of like, you know, you... you, you know, of war, literally. Yeah, tug of war. No, it's just you're having a good time. You're, yeah. you're, 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 you're vibing. I get it. I understand. And there really wasn't that much vibing. When I talk to somebody online and they're too, uh, you know, too eager, I'm like, yeah. oh, you're just trying to fucking, you want me to send you my bank account info. Right. And so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, but we had, she ended up like crashing on my bed. And we, like, you know, I think I spooned her. She probably took her top off, whatever. We didn't fuck. That's fine. Like, whatever. I mean, it was quick anyway. It was, it was soon anyway. Right. Uh, and then I think she left in the morning and then she like the next day, like, like you know, supposedly went to school to work or whatever. She's like, oh, you want to hang out? I was like, all right. And she came over to my place and she was like, oh, you want to just like, I don't have anything to eat. Like, you want, oh, you want to go to the super, like, we can go to the supermarket. I'm like, all right. So like I, we start picking a few things up to make like, you know, salad. And then she like at one point grabs this really Wait expensive. It was a weird salad. I think she wanted a salad. Okay. But like she bought this really, she was buying this really expensive like dressing. 
Okay. It's like yogurt based dressing. Ooh. And she's like picking certain and things out. That's when you said. And then, that's when you knew. Well, at that point, I uh, we got to the checkout, and I basically I forget exactly how I signaled it, but I was like, she's like, oh, separately, yeah, separate, yeah. And she, wow. yeah, because I could see she was like, she thought I was going to buy everything, and she's just picking out her groceries. This is a real moment in yeah. this relationship, right? You are walking around a grocery store with her. Yeah. And this is what, where is this? Uh, it would have been like Holbrook area. So you're, uh, is it stop and shop? Or? I think it's a stop and shop, yeah. So you're at stop and shop with her. Yeah. She starts padding the wagon. Yeah. With high end items. Right. And then you get, now there's no discussion as to who will pay. Right. And yeah. It, but it seems does to be it imp- seem like she's, it's for more than just one night? Uh, it seems like she's going to take this home. In my head, is she going to take this shit home with her? Now, maybe, now, but was it more, like, would it have just been for one night? Look, maybe. I wasn't making a ton of money back then. May, uh, not, so now, you were being really careful. I was being careful because it seemed, it just seemed like a weird move. It seems so, odd. Let me explain. Yeah. When you're at the cash register and, the, and you say separate, how do you decide who's buying what? Because you're just... You have one. Well, I think I, I picked out certain things. You have that's one. Like, that's the thing. She didn't go, hey, this would be really good. You want to get this? It'd be like, she started picking things out. Right. And like, didn't discuss it. I was and like, this is day, I think I was, day yeah. two. Yeah. And I think I was saying, oh, I'm, I, I can make this. I can make whatever it would be. I forget what, what, what I was cooking at the time. Maybe it was quesadillas or something. Uh, I don't know. I was good at making chili reanias. I mean, this is your I famous make, yeah. thing is chili reanias. Yeah. You tell everybody. I make chili reanias. It's really good. Deviled eggs and chili reanias. These yeah. are your two things. I am a, I'm a like a little bit of a chef. So uh, yeah, I mean, so basically all these weird things that she was picking out and carrying. I let her buy. So now when you say separate. Oh, uh, the vibe. You can see it. What is she doing? She, I mean, she didn't play her hand. Now she goes cold. You could see it went a little cold. But that's not what ruined it. I mean, this, that might have been the seed that ruined this. Interesting. But that didn't... That well, mean, now, what ruins it? So, days go by. Look, I mean, I take the IHOP the, I mean, the next morning. And uh, we're like... So, we, we both get omelets, right? And then she orders crepes on the side. Now, again, I wasn't making a lot of money at the time. Now, let me ask you a yeah. question. You're ordering an omelet at IHOP because you're doing a high-protein thing. I you don't just say you and her don't decide to split pancakes. We we it wasn't just we both got our own meals. Just, okay, and then she goes, "I want to get a crepes on the side." I'm like, "Okay, that's fine." Like it was more to me. It's more like uh, you know, it was racking up the price. But I didn't say that. Right. It's like kind of like, "Oh, it's fine." Look, she's cute. What are crepes? Three dollars? Like seven or eight dollars? And here's seven the thing. Right? Here's the thing. I'm not gonna begrudge it to her. I'm. It, it, I'd rather it doesn't, we don't rack up all these bills, but whatever. I'm not. I'm not. All being these a, bills. <laughs> Three days in. I'm just yogurt saying. based salad dressing, crepes. I'm just saying, here's the thing. She doesn't need them. She doesn't need them. Eat the crepes. She barely, she eats like maybe half her omelet at most. Right. She, even, she, she might take one bite of the crepes. What does she look like? What does this woman look That's like? Just a thin woman. She's a, thin. A, a thin blonde woman, attractive. A, a thin. A little older, probably getting into her mid 30s and like used to be like hotter and now she's. She's a thin blonde woman and yeah. she's in her mid 30s. Yeah. And does she look worn? Was, the, the, Let's little, get, yeah. okay. No, no, she, right. well, she wasn't super warm, but she was, you know, but it was like on, 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 on the, the good side of almost warm. Right. She'd yeah. seen some maybe late well, she, nights. Well, she claimed she used to run a fashion line in the Hamptons. Yeah, and, there's a lot of people make a lot of claims. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of well, claims. Well, everything's, everything's suspect. Everything, like, so, so everything's, my point yeah. is, so look, she always crepes, doesn't even eat them. And it's like, oh, what is that? Like right. that, it's like it, it, there was a certain she has level. None of them. She doesn't even have a forkful. She might have one forkful, maybe. Okay. And it, to me, it just screamed like, "I want to see if you'll spend money." She's trying to see what kind of man you are at the IHOP. I guess so. She's trying to judge me by how much crepes. And about how it. do you handle the situation? I didn't say anything. I let it go, but it's like it's in the head. It's in my head there. Okay. And then I'm fucking, then we go to Starbucks and we, she gets her coffee and we go uh, and whatever. And, and so, so you paid the bill at IHOP. Paid the bill. And then we, uh, we, we, we come back to my place. She leaves for the night. Uh, I think it was like a Thursday or a Friday. We make plans. I got I, I, a, a photography shoot in like, you know, Huntington, somewhere in Hunt, like up north in Long Island. Uh, that Saturday, we were supposed to hang out. It was supposed to hang out Sunday. That's our plan. We're going to hang out Sunday. Because I'm busy on Saturday. Uh, so it's probably a Friday when you know, last are. And uh, so I, I guess she had been texting me. Because we talked about this before. 
North Shore, Long Island, we went there. No, there's a, no, no cell signal. You right. can't get a fucking cell signal. Not for us. Not for Sprint. No, not for not for slaves like us. Slaves. Right. I meant. Uh, so I'm out there. I'm shooting like whatever a, a sweet sweet sixteen or whatever the fuck a wedding. And I guess she be like I basically get when I get out of there, I get all these voicemails from her, like just cursing at me, calling me a fucking piece of shit for not like we we made plans. And I have to call her back, like, babe, you know, not babe, whatever it was, you know, the sweet, sweetie pie. Uh, sweetie pie. <laughs> sweetie pie. You know, it's all good. We're going to be fine. I was just like, I had no reception, but kind of aggressive. You know, she's kind of an aggressive person. We end up going to a Greek restaurant that I like on Sunday. And she starts ordering zucchini fries and not eating them again and telling me about this business she used to run. And that's when you broke her nose. <laughs> I mean, that's when I got into the thing of like, what you I, say? I called what'd her out. You, I started, you, I saw, you I, got her. I started like second guessing the business stuff. Like, why would, how did this fall apart? What, what happened? Oh, because she, she pushed with the zucchini fries and you decided well, to call her out for being a fraud. Yeah. And then uh, she wanted to go, she wanted to go to laser tag, I think. And okay. uh, how old was she? 36. And she wanted to go to laser tag? Yeah. Okay. She wanted, I mean, at one point I was like, why do we have to go out? I mean, places? Long Island should sink. Yeah. Cause she was like, she kept going, look, I want someone to date me. And like, what does that mean? Like we have to do things, activities. And so, uh, yeah. So she starts, we, we had a big, you know, screaming match in the car. Cause I was basically calling around. I started calling around about her, how I think you're a fraudulent, uh, fashion designer. I don't think you had a business and, uh, you ordered these fries. Now, what is like she, she firing back at you? She's saying you fat piece of shit. You yeah. Lie, you know, this and that, you cheap fuck. Like, why are you ordering these zucchini fries? Why are you ordering these fucking, uh, these this crates? is like you've been married for 10 years <laughs> and it's day three. Yeah. What a hell. And I didn't come see you because I wanted zucchini fries. Like, yeah. well, why'd you order them? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm not made of money. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, so basically we got back to my place and she left and she sat in front of my car, my house for like two hours. Uh, and I came out at one point like, what are you doing? You have to leave. Yeah. And uh, she's like, I'm on the phone with my mother. <laughs> like crying. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she told her mother she thought like she thought you were the one? She thought you were a good man. <laughs> I mean, I'll be Do honest. You think, <laughs> Do you think like. She got on the phone with her mother and she was like, mommy, I've met a boy. I've met a man named Raymond. And then she had to call her mother up crying and go, he he wouldn't let me or eat zucchini fries. And well, she was me telling fry. me how she fucking like, I, I, I'm not sorry, but like she'd been telling me the whole time how like her living situation was kind of weird. She was staying in some room and she was going back to school at Suffolk or whatever the fuck. Right. And like the landlord was shitty and like, you know, it, it, it felt like a scam in hindsight. It's like, ah, maybe I was being, as I'm saying it, like maybe I was being a little cheap. Right. Maybe being a little bit skin flame, who knows, yeah. you know, but like, but the vibe, I think the vibe was, you I got to protect yourself. I don't like being, like, I'd rather not get laid than be used. And that's where we get back to porn. Yeah. <laughs> is, is, as, as 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 negative as porn can be and how it can lead to alienation, is it any worse than what happened with you and that woman? Would oh, you both have been better staying at home and having the cyber experience? I was really good at jerking off the porn for, at that point. I was really, like, right. I, I had great loads. Yeah. Uh, I knew how to like, just charge it up, like just kind of like, stretch it out. I think there's got to be a happy medium between people saying we should like, have the government enforce morality yeah. and recognizing that, yeah, ODing on porn is not good. Excessive no, I use consumption. It too much, but yeah, uh, excessive consumption of pornography is it has negative effects. It's also like it is like I mean I here's the thing. I, I I probably watched too much porn for years and uh they they say like oh it, it fucks you up, you you can't get stimulated. I'm in a healthy, loving relationship. It's very sexual we're very sexual. Right. Uh so I don't know if the, the long term effects are as bad as they make them out to be. Right. But it isn't the best way to live. One of the guys that I used to watch on porn went to Iraq and had his legs blown off. Did he start doing porn again? I don't know. Yeah. No, but I mean it's just an interesting way. It's an interesting life story. Sure. Was it was he not was he on like amateur porn? No, he was you know, a website. He was like official dude. And, and he went to Iraq like to be a soldier? He was a soldier. I mean, and then he just, you know, he lost his legs in the war. So, I mean, this, you know, I don't know. I mean, support the troops, but not, you know. Uh, I mean, so the idea is. Did you ever is, pay him? No. I mean, yeah. I, I didn't, I'm not paying for that stuff. I'm not stupid enough to fall for that. I don't mean pay. I mean, more like pay, like, 
I like at yeah, one like point paywall. I subscribe no. to like Bang uh, the Bang Brothers for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, because like look at, now it's a little easier because it's not. Like I've never watched porn now. I watch, but not nowhere near as much. But like you can get full length like high quality stuff free but like back then it was a little more like you sound like a guy telling like his nephew at christmas listen you can get full length high quality stuff free you don't need to spend any money you don't know how good you kids have it i just have to pay money well i was a subscriber to bang box you don't have to be a subscriber well the thing i mean like at that point it was a little more uh i mean if you're really savvy sure but it was a little more of a hassle to like Unless you wanted to watch a four-minute clip, I want. Yeah. This is very important. Even though I know it's fake, and I know it's like you know, not actually a, you know a job interview that turns into fucking. But I still like the story. I still like the uh, whole- yeah to do the fantasy or whatever. Um, I, I think yeah, you know, I was just performing in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and I think what's funny about some of these moral questions is they are luxury questions to yeah. debate. Just the idea of like you know, uh, you know, people debating like uh. You know, what drag queen story hour at uh, libraries or whatever, or right. you know, which is inflamed people. I, I mean, it's like to me, I'm like it's people in wacky costumes reading to kid. I don't, you know, it doesn't seem to be oh, like a library. Yeah, it's like that's a thing that everybody. That's a new cultural issue that's like driving everyone insane. Is like drag queens reading to kids the at drag, libraries. It's, it's, it's I think made, we, I'm not making a verdict here or whatever. Yeah. But doesn't it seem weird that like for all the appropriation cult talk and all yeah. the. And like and and the self eating left kind of thing, yeah. That like no one like you would think the trans people would have gone after the drag queens by now and go well, you know. And like I'm there sure there be will. no friction. Though. I'm sure they will. I don't know. I I tend to think that it's it's drag queens should not be reading to kids, not because they're inherently degenerate, but just because it's fucking boring and like yeah. you should be doing other stuff that's funner and cooler. it also seems forced and weird. It seems forced and weird. Like, why would like like it's like why like have a dominatrix or have a like, which is, there's nothing wrong with that either. Like there's nothing wrong with being a dominatrix. I, no, I mean, I would um, be weird if a dominatrix had a reading program in a school. Be. It'd be saying, odd. The idea of a drag queen outside of the drag, because that's the thing about drag queens. They don't really live like that, right? They only no, do it when they do, do drag. I think some of them don't. I think what bothers people about it. But if you it, do live like that, aren't you like basically trans now? Isn't that more of the term? Because drag forget queens- Forget the terms. doesn't matter. Forget the terms. My point with drag queens is like, it's a performance thing, and it's, and it, I get it. It's a tradition, people, whatever. Right, but they they they're, they're so you're taking it out of that realm, but you put it into a different realm. It's weird. Well, they can, well, their realm is whatever they want it to be. I mean, they host shows on television. They're they're they're. It's not just about a, dragging. You know. Yeah, but it's not just a nightclub. I mean, I think drag queens are people that are exist in the world. Like anyway, now yeah, a lot of them do not choose to uh, live their whole life in drag, but. The drag economy is huge. I mean, people are into it and people sure. go to the show. I mean, the shows do very well. There's a lot of... What, I've been to a drag show. It's very nice. It's, it, it, well, yeah. I mean, the, the, the it's supposed it used to be very funny. You know, I said on the Shane Gillows episode that like, now what's funny is like they're making drag queens into moralists, which yeah. I think is insane. But the idea is that it's sexualizing. The, this drag queen story hour sexualizes kids. I don't know if it does or not. I, I will say this. Um, it seems like it is forced. Yeah. It does seem like there's an agenda and it does seem like, I will say the drag isn't inherently sexual. It's more, to me, it seems like more of like costumes. Like, does anyone want to fuck a drag queen? I don't know. Some people, yeah. Maybe. But no, but I hit totally. I, I, 100%, I, to me, it's 100%, not a sexual right. thing. It's, it's like a goofy... Of course. And that's the problem. If you don't go so far as go, you're sexualizing children, because like, then you have to, like, the legitimate, well, no, we're not. Like, But the, the real thing is more like, I don't want to explain this to my five-year-old kid. It's just complicated. It's more because like it's complicated yeah. and annoying. It's not because, like, I think you're doing anything wrong with you. Yeah. But, like, but maybe you should. But, like, it's also, like, it's just, like... It, They'll figure it out in time, but it's a little young to like even like. Yeah, you know. I, I, I'm not a guy that has a strong opinion either way. Other than it does seem forced to me. It seems weird. I, I've been heavily critical of the idea that we that that young prepubescent or even pubescent children should transition with the help of doctors and take right. hormones. I've said that that is, I think, tantamount to child abuse in the sense that. You're taking a very young child and, uh, you know, enabling them to make decisions that will affect the rest of their life. Right. They may not, they may not want those. Look, it, it, 
now that we have a more permissible social structure, yeah, yeah, they can study it for like fifteen years and see how it turns. Because like maybe fifteen years ago, look, it really is. We we can really say that like ninety nine percent of these people never change their mind. You go, and maybe they should be allowed to. Like, but like it really is kind of like it, it seems at this point jumping the gun. It's, 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 it's jumping because. the gun, and I also think that a lot of the people that supposedly would have, a lot of the people that don't transition turn out to just be gay. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Now, I am, so I have always said that I don't think giving hormones to children, I think that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, the, the uh, it, you know, but again, if a kid wants to dress up, you like know, a girl, express, fine. Yeah. I don't care what, you know, listen, if you're a parent and, you know, I, I don't think stifling your child's expression right. is the right way to go. I think that only will make things more difficult later on in their life. I just don't think that you should be giving them hormones. That's the thing. It's like, look, should, should we have started to make this more acceptable years ago? Sure. But that yeah. being said, we haven't. And like, let's not just rush to like, well, the same thing with the, with the, like, you know, with the whole trans in fighting and, and, and right. sports. It's like, yeah, maybe eventually we can figure this out. Maybe when they transition earlier, people, yeah. they won't have the same level of testosterone. It won't be as uneven. Yeah, yeah, but like, give it just, time, and, and 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 for now, it's like maybe, yeah, maybe some people just get screwed over and can't do MMA professionally. Too much right now doesn't make sense, yeah. and I think the problem is you're seeing a real backlash against gay people, yeah, and trans people because you have a very politically active wing of whatever you want to call the LGBT community that is redefining so many things at once, right? Gender, um biology yeah uh the i you know who can play what sports and compete against who um it's it's really this much change at this pace people are becoming very uncomfortable with it yeah. and the whole thing is they're like you know what's interesting is a lot of the dudes that i meet or i'll talk to and go out with are guys that either are not out of the closet or they're just they're 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 out to a few people, but they don't they're not public that public about it. Right. Some of it is because maybe there's more fluidity in sexuality, but I think some of it is like they're like, well, I don't want to make this my whole identity because I don't I don't then I'm forced to be in this position where I have to co-sign right. all of these other things that I don't agree with that are being shoved down everybody's throat. What's well, like the women thing, or like women in media kind of thing? Yeah. Because like, like, look, you had Ridley and Alien, you had me, uh, George Rich and Fifth Element. You have a certain amount of like female like you know uh, protagonists there's a couple, there's a couple oh, Sarah Connor and Terminator I like, love that this will have nothing to do with the conversation you're like, no but my point is you right. know how it is no you got people, me the job people, people, like, people, people like people like That's people aren't against it but it's when you start like when you start to cr try to do you know, we're gonna we're gonna make Lady Ghostbusters we're gonna make you know the four, like Star Wars is really silly. even some of this Avengers stuff it's never good like the, my point is it's never the people who are like making their point to like get this representation. It, first of all, they're, they're not regular people. They're people in power who are like, they have an agenda and what they, what they force is never really reflected by like it, the women never seem to, when they really talk to them, don't seem to like it. I think it's probably, I can't speak for, you know, the gay community, yeah. but I think a lot of this stuff isn't representative of the gay community, like no. the extremes. It's like, no, it's like the stuff you force. Nobody wants this. Nobody, right. nobody, this is a small group of people who are pushing a lot of this stuff. Yeah. They're not people you you rarely bump into them. Right. They're not people. They're people that occupy positions of power and feel that pushing this narrative and this agenda is a way for them to solidify their power. Yeah. That is what it comes down to. Sure. And there should be plenty more representation across the board. But it does. I mean, see, it's, it does it's shocking to me that there's not more athletes that have come out of the closet. That yeah. There are not more actors that have come out of the closet. And I know behind the scenes that there's a lot of people that identify as either gay or bisexual that are not coming out of the closet. One of the reasons is because I think there's such a, there's such a politicized identity. There's a lot of gay people who just go, I just want to be a human being. Right. And there's such a politicized identity to it now yeah. where they're like, well, well, wait a minute. Why am I now have to be for third trimester abortion? Right. Like, I mean, look what they did to Kevin Spacey when he came out. Yeah. I mean, this is a man <laughs> who lived his life Helping children make, you know, where, what, what do you think? It's a good, it's, it's an interesting question. I was, I was in, so I was in Bridgeport. My, my point about these whole luck, these luxury things, I'm in Bridgeport. Bridgeport, Connecticut is a sacrifice zone. 
it is one in 43% chance of being a victim of property crime, one in 112 wow. or something percent chance of being a victim of a violent crime. Jeez. It is. It's been in, it's like an abandoned city. Does it seem like a, like a, like, a, like what you call a slum or does it seem like a, it's a, a suburb is just rotting away? It, whatever. Wor it's worse than a slum. It's okay. the next step. It's, it's basically you have a, uh, an urban area, a city center that has been, pretty much abandoned right. all of the buildings it says available everywhere um and then you see you know there's a couple of crackheads walking around this that and the other thing but it's desolate right it's abandoned and i was talking to my friend's father and my friend's father said that you know sikorsky helicopters is the biggest employer in that whole area of Connecticut. They employ like, I think they have one facility that employs 8,000 people. And then they have another facility that employs around 2,500. And then a lot of the feeder companies that make the parts for Sikorsky helicopters. And he said to me, he goes, listen, he goes, Bridgeport has been bad for 30 years mm -hmm. because a lot of those factories moved down South. But he goes, the reality is if Sikorsky helicopter leaves, this entire area becomes like a little Detroit. Right. He goes, we have massive problems, you yeah. know? It's amazing to me how many areas are reliant on one or two corporations and that if they go away or if they automate even half their jobs, you're looking at serious economic- Well, it's like half of upstate, isn't it? Like yeah. well, most of it yes. probably. Yes, Because like the problem, Bridgeport was never anywhere big, as big as Detroit. Right. But like, but I think a lot happened to a lot of upstate, a lot of uh, probably the Midwest too. Like, I mean, Detroit's remarkable just because how big it is and how yeah. widespread- but I think a lot of this country has already gone through a lot of you know, those scenarios. A hundred percent. And that's when you start looking at like, wow, a lot of these, you know, whether we're, we're talking about morality, which certainly, listen, the, the, those, those conversations have a place. But it's so funny to me that down the road, we might be like, oh, remember when things were good? Right. We we're arguing about drag queens and oh, yeah. reading, reading in libraries. Like, well, it's crazy that the only candidate really talking about is it is Yang. Yeah. And like, he's, he's, he's a goofball. Yeah. He's the only guy that seems to be like, guys, the problems are so deep. Yeah. And they're not necessarily given easily to political solutions. Right. And even his solution, it's like, Thousand dollars a month, and it's like, oh, this yeah. might not even like. It's like it, even we kind of know it. That's like if if he's right, that ain't gonna work. Probably, it's, it's probably not gonna work. <laughs> yeah. But what he is doing is, is he's at least said, here's, it up, yeah. here's the problem. Well, thing, we, we, it's this weird thing. I was talking to the Uber driver in a way here because they're talking about how bad Uber's doing. Like, how do they keep losing money? And I'm like, well, spending four hundred million dollars a quarter on R and D. It's like you know, they can, and probably so they can make like self driving cars worse. Yeah, right? yeah. Where is that? Where is that four hundred million going for and research? What else could it be? I mean, yeah. researching you know, yeah. GPS? What are they researching? Where, where people get drunk and need boobers? <laughs> yeah, you know. It's, so it's, it's like, and like at a certain point, and he like he's got like in his sixties. And like, I'm the one saying like, you know, he, he should be in my shoes, but I'm saying like at a certain point, you know me, like I have a fr like a free market-ish kind of background. I'm not yeah. a libertarian per se, but like, but I'm like, I'm saying like at a certain point, why You're can't- You're not good looking enough to be a Marxist or a fascist. Fair enough. That's the reality. <laughs> but at a certain point, like why can't we just outlaw certain technology if it's that, dis if it's that disruptive to the public uh, good? To, to, to the general good that like, well, because truck, truck drivers, like we're going to, why not? Why are we going to allow- an entire industry of people who are the most vulnerable. Why to can we not legislate progress or the pace right. of progress? Sure. That's pretty much your question. I mean, look, we, it's not that we have a free market anyway. We, we don't. We, we, the only time we we, we, we we err on the side of the free market is when we liquidate so jobs. So here's the arguments that are going to be used. They're going to say, if we legislate the pace of progress in one industry, yeah. it could have unintended consequences in other industries, things like healthcare, where, where, the, where I'm just telling you yeah, what the arguments sure. are going to be. And they're going to say, hey, if Uber can't, automate their cars, then how are we going to get this vaccine to you when you need it? I mean, these are going to be the And my arguments. response is, can you at least take your dick out of the kid before you say that? Right. <laughs> what, what, what are we doing here? What is this? They'll be making that point on the uh, on a, on an altar, yeah. on an altar during a black mass. Yeah. You know, they take their mask off. They're like, here's the point, dummy. <laughs> Do you have any idea the percentage of money that this healthcare system pumps in R&D? <laughs> um, speaking of, of, of uh, sacrificial altars, <laughs> I went to New Haven. I walked around Yale. I'd never been to Yale. Oh, nice. Yeah. Have you ever been to Yale? What do you think? Okay. <laughs> the, the point is, first of all- I spent I, a semester there. I want to go- 
It was like Goodwill Hunting, but the guy's really an idiot, you know? <laughs> Who let you in here? Yeah. Why were you writing? Listen, that? <laughs> what are you writing on the board? Yeah, you're just writing nothing. You're drawing dicks. <laughs> Listen, I'm, a, I'm an unrecognized genius. I've been cleaning the school for a long time. And then they're like, all right, let him write. Then you just start writing in cell. <laughs> you know, the liberation of women. Becky's and fucking <laughs> Stacy's. <laughs> <laughs> Stacy's gotta fuck Becky's not. <laughs> what I, I wanted you to, so bad to be there because I wanted you to st- I wanted to film you outside the Skull and Bones tomb. Me and you, oh, I wanted yeah. somebody to film us yelling, you think you're better than me. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> there was something to me that was so funny about that idea of you being like, You think you're better than me? You think you're better than me, Mr. Rothschild Rockefeller? Here's the thing. I don't think. Here's the thing. I don't think that anyone gets called. Like it's not like Bush. You know, George W. Bush gets a phone call and they arrange to have us removed. But you think there's like, look, a lot of them become presidents or <laughs> senators. To, by the way, the idea that anyone <laughs> has to like remove us from what? That's a great question. Remove us from what? <laughs> you know, my plan to broadcast from somewhere outside of Tampa in two years, like. <laughs> No, I, I don't meant, have to I meant like from the from the, the tomb. Oh, yeah. But my well, point there'll is there'll be security. There'll be but schools. like the, I, I do feel like look, a lot of them become presidents and and, and, sure. and presidents of Goldman Sachs or whatever. Presidents of something. Yeah, and uh, there's got to be at least a couple who hang around campus though. Well, so I looked up. So the 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 the, the Bonesman. They, there was a pro, you know I, I think it was around 2000 and I don't know. But Facebook made a lot of photo albums public that were once private. So oh, yeah. then there was just this photo album of all these Bonesmen, mm-hmm. supposedly Bones kids. Bones that, kids? Well, you know, Yale Bonesmen, whatever okay. you call them. They, yeah. But, you know, not older people, like, yeah. you know, new inductees or whatever. And they, they, you know, there's this upstate New York, there's this island, Deer Island, which is a private skull and bones island. It's kind of a dump, right? right. But these kids and probably older members of the thing, they all go there together. The thing about Skull and Bones is I actually think, you know, from having Russ Baker on the show and all that stuff, it it, 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 it is just a fraternity of the wealthiest people in the world. Right. That being said, I'm sure within it, there are constellations of power. Sure. And, but, yeah. But also, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. <laughs> no, it ain't. Like a fraternity of are, the wealthiest kids in the world. Yes. And they are laying in coffins right. and drinking fake blood and there's mock sacrifice. I'm always in this thing. Bohemian Grove, mock sacrifice. Right. Skull and Bones, mock sacrifice. Why are we doing all these mock sacrifices? Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, here's the thing. Here, well, here's, were, here's my example. Sure, yeah. I look at menus of restaurants I'm not going to eat in all the time. And I have like, I have a mock meal. Right. I look at what I'd order, but I'm fat. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. I really eat a lot of the time. Right. So the idea that you're like just mock, it's always a mock sacrifice. Right. No, it's a metaphor. <laughs> it's a metaphor. Here's the thing. How many other fraternities are there at Yale? Probably Scroll and Key, Wolf's Head. There's a lot of elite. Uh, I try. Let's just say ten elite fraternities. Yes, ten. If you're in any one of them, yes, you're con- almost controlling the world. You're you're doing you're, something. You're, you're maneuvering. You know, like, I mean, like, I'll tell you what. You know how not, many friends yeah. I knew from college? I don't think I remember. I, 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 one. And he he's a, he runs a bread route from Martin. <laughs> We're not. Which we're not. I have. I have lobster salad from Sables, by the way. And I wanted you to bring potato rolls. I have great lobster salad from oh, Sables nice. uptown. It's phenomenal. But but the point is, like, so the idea that like one step more. No, we're in the most weird elite one, and we do weird shit. Yeah. So you can call it like, of course, this is like you're already rich kids who have like, influence. It's, right. it's, just, it's just like it, Skull and Bones isn't the nexus of power. It's just the Facebook of, of, of nexus of power. Yeah, now. it's it's the, just their social media back then. Yeah, it's just what it is. Right. And it's just the way it's the entrance point right. into a world. So I looked at these because I looked at the pictures of these kids and they just look like college kids, right. diverse, <laughs> diverse college kids, women, everything. On the side. So I started looking up some of them in their LinkedIn's and everything. It's kind of funny. Like some of them are like SJ Dubs. I think it's <laughs> hilarious. The Skull and Bones SJW is great. Right. And I bet that's actually a thing. Yeah. Like the kids are like, I'm an activist, but I, you know what I mean? They Whoa. truly believe they're making the world better. I mean, what was David Rocker? Who is David Rockefeller's grandson? He's a global warming activist. Who is it? Uh, yeah, I don't know his, well, name. his name. But the point, the, the Rothschild kids are like, yeah. They have some shit they're fucking trying to save the world. With. Right, right, right. It's like, yeah. They're stomping around in dirty white Converse shoes. It's like, we need to start doing better so that they don't remove us from power. Yes. That's, like, that's what it is. Like, no, grandpa was able to, like, fucking strip mine Africa. I just love it. It's like, how do they square 
the uh, it, how do they make it all work in their head? I because guess. They, they, they look best case. Yeah, and I don't think they fully believe it, but uh, no, because they, look, someone has to make it better, and they have their hands on the on the wheels of power or close to it, and it's like we need to uh, bring this the the, the wheel the, the the mechanisms of power into the 21st century of equality right and, and, and anti-slavery and anti-racism right you we, know we need to make the world better we but, we're gonna but make the stable. World, yeah. stable stable we can't let it's right. all gonna go to shit it's right. all chaos how great riots. i want me and you to do a show at skull and bones right. where we get up there in the dark because we can't see anyone in the group. Now, I I, I want to pitch this to Yale. I'm, 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 I'm dead serious. Now, of course, this is not going to happen because right. they employ several levels of people to make sure nothing like this yeah. ever happens. Right. Ever, ever, ever. But the idea... They wouldn't even let Chomsky do this. The idea... <laughs> honestly, just go with me for a second. Chomsky <laughs> is not funny. <laughs> the idea that me and you come out on the stage, okay? We have, like, top hats. <laughs> Take, go with this. The, the, the kids, the bonesmen, they're all in whatever. They're in their coffins, in their seats, in the dark. We come out on stage um, and we do our bit. We do our hour, you know? Right. We cover the Long Island Diner, the Luciferian Elite. Yeah. Uh, you know, you go on about Kermit Roosevelt for a while. <laughs> it's We do our whole hour and then we just get out of it. Maybe we have a dance routine at the end. Sure. You know, something fun for everyone, and we can be compensated, but I would do it pro bono. Mm -hmm. I would just do it for the experience of doing it. I just don't think that they, it's sad, Raymond, that they don't have the sense of humor. Um, That's what saddens me. I think they, about these snowflakes and skull and bones. Who is very popular right now in comedy? Like, who's like Kevin Hart? Uh, yeah, I would say him. So bad, sure. you know, I mean, like, you know, Fluffy. What were the big people, really, yeah, like, right. Amy Schumer? They can get any of them. Yeah, but they don't even want... They can I'm get saying, any of but, them. But from their perspective, like uh, people like but that here's our don't sales. want... They, they, they don't, don't think anything's funny. Kevin Hart wouldn't waste his time there. He, they, can't, they can't afford him. The point is that... You think they can't afford him? Uh, they could, but they wouldn't. And he's one of those dudes who like does it. He's a, like, my point is like, right. our act is for them. Sure, Kevin's but my thing act is, is not but for isn't, you. Isn't part of their thing... I don't, of course it's not. But isn't part of their thing... They don't really care about the art, whatever the art is. They just want the prestige. We had Kevin Hart come down, but they but we can't weren't talk coffins. about any of it anyway. This is my point. Oh. Do you see my point now? Okay, it's all the same when you can't talk. Right. There's a soft piano. Everything feels good in the dark. There's soft piano. Me and you come out. <laughs> We're doing something. It's pretty choreographed. Okay. <laughs> We're for bigger bent. We're pretty light on our feet. Yeah. Not quite Jackie Gleason, but <laughs> we're pretty damn good. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're doing a little thing, a little soft shoe. Hello, no, my baby. Hello, hello my darling. Hello, my right. <laughs> Nobody likes that. Nobody thinks that's funny. They might like it. We I mean, I'm just putting it out into the world because a lot of people listen to this show and maybe maybe you're maybe you're in Skull and Bones and you're afraid to reach out to us, but don't be. We have a picture of Stalin up on the on the projector. Yes. Like, you got a friend in me. <laughs> yes. Now I like the way you're thinking. Dang. We do a whole, you know. You see, it, it's, it's, like, like, it's like literally, it's like Stalin, Genghis Khan, all the, and it's like, we yes. are the world. <laughs> we are the children. <laughs> yeah, yes, this is what I'm going for. Right. Just a fun, it's a fun romp. That's all. Yeah. And then. I think we should, uh, I'm just saying. I, 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 look, we, 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 we broached my, this idea. I, asked, I know somebody that knows someone who works at Yale. I have floated this idea, and the, and the response I got was no. You have a manager, you have an agent, but we've broached the idea of but me. But they're not creative, these me, fucks. But me, we've we broached the idea in the past of me for certain purposes being your, you know, your your your, your, your agent. Sure, uh, I will negotiate with Yale. Yes, I will get them on the phone. I will make threats. Well, yeah, the, I well, will. And, and the idea, just because my agent's husband listened to this, <laughs> it, well, this was not a serious <laughs> consideration. <laughs> there would be my agent, but there would be nothing funnier than having you negotiate <laughs> on my behalf. Be like, listen, here's the reality. <laughs> listen, the money you need to understand what we're going to deliver. Two words, Murray Rothbard. You've never seen a show <laughs> like we're going to... Fractional Reserve Bank, we got to talk about this it. This is like the circus when you could hit the animals, you know? <laughs> when things ran efficiently. You want to stick things in us? Yeah. <laughs> it's all game. It's all game. I mean, there's something I like 
about the idea of, you know, I always wanted to be an elite, Raymond. I've always yeah. wanted to be an elite, but I was fat and I came from Long Island. And- you want it too much. I know. You got, you got to take the, but take a cue from I'm me. I'm too hungry. You got to take your foot off the because pedal a you bit. See, Because you, it, you present as homeless right. and disturbed. But did you ever see that movie with Joe Pesci where he's a homeless guy at Harvard? No. That's the vibe I'm going for. No, but I did see The Irishman. I wanted to kill myself. So the reality is, I'm just saying, these Skull and Bones guys, what do you think it's like to be in an institute? You get tapped, Skull and Bones. I mean, I went to Nassau Community College. Well, what's interesting is like, so Bush's kid gets in. Bush, Kerry's kid gets in. Bush's right? daughter doesn't want to be in. She got tapped. She said no. They have a lot of females? They have females now, yes. But it, well, here's that's a, that's the interesting thing. There's a couple levels here. Because A, it's like there is that elite crop. How like what is the level, like what is the more marginal? Like who are the guys who like earned their way into skull and bones? Um like you know, the guys who stole Geronimo's skull, like Prescott Bush and things like that. Was he the first? He was the first Bush to get. He was. I think he's one of the first classes of people. You know what I'm saying? No, but my, my, my point is, is it, is it all legacy or are some of these people? No, people are in their way. There are people yeah. that are looked at as leaders. They go, this person's going to be a leader for right. whatever reason. So like, the, the, like those guys are interesting, but also like, is it the same? The same way, like when you know about like you know the Navy, like the Navy SEALs aren't called Navy SEALs. It's like Dev Grew and there's a SEAL Team Six, but it's not really SEAL Team Six anymore. They changed the thing. So is Skull and Bones even the thing anymore? Like if Jenna Bush is going, I don't want to be a part of this. Is is there something else? Is there just like you know Bahamut's cl- uh, social club <laughs> or whatever? That's like, you know. hey, you Bonesman. I'm I'm actually in Bahamut's social club. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. The idea of being an elite, forget right. the secret society, just the idea of go, being at Yale, going to Yale. I think it's, pr- here's the thing. Um, right. I, I have pr- no I, friends I think, that are elites. I, I, don't, elites. I don't think it's great. Remember, I, I told you. George, George, yeah, I I wanted, think, yeah. I think George Bush Sr., the first, you know, Prescott, George yeah. Prescott Bush, uh, or the Walker Bush, whatever. Who cares? The, the one who's in the CIA director, you know, for first President Bush. I think he, because his role in the CIA and probably killing Kennedy and getting Nixon, like he enjoyed the work. But I think yeah. with most of these guys, you look at a guy like Hitler, you look at yeah. a guy like Stalin. Stalin was a criminal. Hitler was a whatever the fuck. He was a, like a, a fucking soldier who turned into like a fucking degenerate. Yeah, let's just artist. keep that quote. Stalin's a criminal. Hitler's a soldier. Let's let's just. <laughs> It's just that's going to be great for the new podcast app transcription service. <laughs> no, I'm saying he was like a general yeah. artist. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. point is, these, these guys weren't didn't come from elites. But the people who really want to go go crazy transforming the world in their own image usually don't seem to come from these circles. Right. So it's probably pro- it does seem to be unless I've you never I've never Raymond I've never been invited to like someone's compound. I've never. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've never been. I have no friends that went to Ivy League school. You never show up to a party in high school that you weren't invited to? Yeah, the, Ray, right, it's a Long Island party. It's a different story. We I, make a fucking nice mac and cheese. We make a fucking quiche. I know, but I'm saying that I... Oh, so you're saying that's the way we should get in? We make something nice. You show up with a quiche? We bring a bottle of champagne. Now I like bucks. the way you're talking. But don't you ever say, I just want to be... Listen, I'm in the inner sanctum of comedy, and I realized how much it sucks. Right. Then I want, it's not that it sucks. It's just different from the, the rest of you guys. The, right. All of you out there that think that it's going to be a certain way. Once you get in these groups, it ain't that, it's, it's not what you think, right? right? It's just what it is. You know, sometimes you'll, you'll be around people and you'll be like, oh, this is somewhat different than I'd imagined. I just want to know, I wonder if you burrow into the elite sanctum, uh, you know, the inner sanctum. I don't think they like it. I don't yeah, like, well, except uh, except for the guys like 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 who are actually with the hands like we like, have a lot to offer Raymond. I'm saying, but we, we, but we would. That's the point. Right. That we're not trying to preserve anything. Right. Like these guys, look at a guy like Jeff Bezos or a guy like yeah. Bill Gates or Steve right. Jobs. They're disrupting and becoming rich and and pushing out the old people. Yes. And like and the more power or like when Rockefeller and Carnegie. So is did. that why they won't let us in? They're afraid of us. I'm trying to follow your yes. logic, Raymond. Well, my point is, yes, they're afraid of us. They're afraid. We're better than them, Raymond. We could do a better job. But we could point, do it all. But the point is, their job is to be. Is to preserve the the wealth that so came before them. They can't let us in because we're charismatic and they fear us. Yeah, and they yes. can't use us because no one likes us and we're not attractive. Exactly, that's interesting. <laughs> they can't really blackmail us or use us in any sexual way. They can fuck us, but I mean, whatever. We'll let them fuck us. Yeah. Interesting, but they can't really use that because we'll just let people fuck yeah. us. Doesn't really matter. Hey, right? Dale Carnegie fucked me. <laughs> what is it? I'm telling Charlie Rose. He's like, what? Who are you? 
<laughs> is Dale Carnegie still alive? <laughs> I don't think so. I read his audio book years ago. How to win friends and influence I just people. love it. That's that's what your character at Goodwill Hunting writes on the on the on the chalkboard. Dale Carnegie fucked me. They're like, let's take a look at this theorem that he came up with. What did he write? He wrote Dale Carnegie fucked me. That's what he came up with. But here's my whole thing. I've always had a fascination with the elites. Right. They've never, they've never had that fascination back with me. Um, I mean, you, you, you're, you're very good at crowd work. I don't know if they, <laughs> I have but, material too. I know. But don't uh, say that. What are you saying? <laughs> well, I mean, no, 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 I mean, good elevator. jokes. You have great jokes. Uh, I love, you know, your Navy SEAL bit is great. Like, it's a fun one. All your bits are, your new Epstein bits great. They're fun. Point is, I don't know if they value that as much as we do. Interesting. Um, I don't, I think. They tend to... Now, here's the thing. They all yeah. can't be fucking and eating children. No, but they're fucking like grown women or men. Right. They're doing something. They're doing... Like, look, when you... Look, I, you you know more... Like, you haven't dealt with the elite, but you've dealt with rich drug addicts a little bit, right? Yeah. Don't, doesn't it seem like compared to the way you enjoy drugs, they enjoy it less? Correct. They, yeah. Like, a they, bit less, they enjoy everything less. There's less thrill to it. Yeah, they enjoy everything less. Yeah, so good a, point. There's a numbing effect. And I'm not I'm not one of these idiots who are saying it's better to be poor. Right. But you know, but I'm oh, saying let's is, not say that. <laughs> but my point is, like, I don't think that they appreciate it. They would they would they would kill themselves if they became poor. But right. like, but they don't have the context to really get a thrill out of it. Um or to enjoy the way that you you know berate uh you know, like, look, if uh, Prescott Bush's grandson, whoever he is, Archie Bush, whatever, was in the Pierce. car, was in the Pierce Bush, was in the car with us when you're yelling at a Taco Bell worker for leaving out your nacho cheese, I think it's hilarious. Yeah. We threaten to like to attack, but you know, and, and jump I, through the window. Let me, I want, I want the best for people. Yeah. And when I see them not performing their tasks. Right. And listen, I only yelled right because she laughed at me. She, she just didn't understand you. She laughed. <laughs> you knew she laughed in my face. Right. Well, you she said you want. My face. I think she laughed because you said I want nacho cheese and I want to dip my like apple slices in it. No, which you I, meant whatever no, no, it was. No, no, no. What do you want to do? She. This is why the bagel guy was not that wrong. Yeah. There are people that let. La she just laughed at me. She thought I was funny. She, and I was not trying to be funny. She thought you were nothing to worry about. And right. <laughs> and and I just went at her. And I and you know you make a whole big deal out of this. You keep bringing it up. No, it's a fun. I liked it. I, I you, was, you were an unpredictable guy. She she was really starting. So she with was me. terrible. She yeah. was a terrible person. Yeah. She's probably an MS thirteen. So uh, sure. she has nothing to fear from me. <laughs> right. But now that I'm recounting this, I understand why many of the elites would not be a party. To this right. Thing. Like they're just going to be like, ah, can you shut me off? Like they're not going <laughs> right. to, I enjoy your company. Right. They, 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 they don't <laughs> like unpredictability. <laughs> you're a little bit can of a wild you? card. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess that's what it is. I'm a little bit of a wild card, and so are you. Yeah. But we should be proud of that. I am proud. That's what America is. I'm trying to stick it to these guys. We're American, and, and you're doing a great job. Thank you. We're American. I'm just, it's interesting to me when you walk around at Yale and you go, you know, are, these people aren't better than us. I don't believe they are better than us. No. Now, some of them are, but I think we're as smart as they are. We're I'm smarter. We're, we're smart. You are smarter. <laughs> you are smarter. <laughs> but I feel like we just lack discipline. We lack. What would have had to happen in our lives? Think about this. Yeah. For us to have gotten into Skull and Bones. Um, we I, never had a shot. No. I mean, look, right. Even if I got into Yale. Like, right. I think, look, they look at you. If you look, because our parents, for them, are poor. Yeah. Like, because, I mean, they look at us probably worse than like scholarship, like low income people who get scholarships, like pure, like, like, like inner city people. Yeah. Our parents are, we're yeah. worse than that. We're worse. Yeah. Uh, to them. I mean, like, uh, like I, I think our level, like when they, what they think of as poor is people whose parents are like, you know, successful surgeons. Right. Or like, you know, they own a small company and aren't, aren't the president of an international bank. Right. Like, so I don't know that even if we got in, I mean, we'd have to do something like decapitate a statue, like you know, or like, is that what? Prescott yeah, we'd have to really make a we'd name have to, for ourselves. We'd have, to, we'd have to burn down the food court, or whatever they call it. You know, we'd have to like <laughs> imagine we burned down the food court because we thought it'd get us in a skull and bones. We just ended up in jail. <laughs> like, what are you idiots? <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to make a statement. We burned down the food court. 
thinking we were going to get tapped in the fucking <laughs> skull and bones. And now we're in jail. <laughs> can somebody please, if you, can somebody please, my dumb fans are all going to, by the way, do this. And I, I, can somebody please DM me anonymously and tell me about how they got into Skull and Bones or Scroll and Key or Wolf's Head or any of the opportunities. Make an Instagram account. Just DM me anonymously. Now, I know what I've just invited, <laughs> and I know that it's just going to be a million people calling me fat. But please, seriously, if you are serious about it, do a dummy account. We'll never know who you are. Just DM me and tell me how it happened. And, I'm and, curious. And, right. To grease the wheels. To grease the wheels. You can fuck us. You can fuck Listen, you want to come in here and fuck us? You can fuck us. Even if you need a real human sacrifice, so many of our friends will gladly be sacrificed by you. I look, what are they going to do? Go to the bar every night? Right. Keep making my podcast. Please listen to my podcast more. Maybe I won't feel this way, but it's like, it's starting to feel listen, like. Listen, here's the deal. If you let us in for just a week, sacrifice us. Yeah. Sacrifice both of us. It's a great ending. It's a great ending. Let us in. Show us how it really is. And then light us on fire. Now, what if they did that and they they go, this sacrifice won't even appease the gods. Like, it <laughs> won't even, like, we can't even do this. He's actually going to get mad at us. Yeah. <laughs> you give us this. They're like, hey, we sacrifice young virgins. What are we, you slops, you fat The slops. occult shit is weird, though, right? I mean, it is interesting, but it is weird. A little. There is some weird <laughs> shit going on. Yeah, of course, on. look. I mean, Washington, D.C., the amount of symbolism. Yeah, it's super weird. And I'm not, like, you don't have to go that far to go, like, oh, is it designed like a pentagram so it can channel energy from Satan? I don't know. Maybe. But I, at the very uh, least, it's just weird. We do enough evil shit, whether we're challenging. Right. You know what I mean? It's like well, that's, that's the thing. That's the, it's the same thing. With like, why, why does it matter if the kid fuckers are wearing goat heads? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, why yes. does it matter if like the George Washington statue is, shit, is, is designed after Bahamut? I think what it is, is what, and, and, and what it does is that just it, 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 here's what it really does. It illustrates how wrong you could have gotten everything. Sure. That's what I think. I it, think it's also, do you think it's anything to the idea of like, they wanted to let the Pope know, like, don't even fuck around. There's something to that. Like, I the think, when, the, when they were, the Vatican at that point was still more, also the Church of England. The, yeah. Do you think it was a certain level of like. There was absolutely that type of paganism was, was, was a it, way to. Because the Enlightenment yeah. did kind of play with secularism and all that. Like, yeah. And the, and the symbolism of Freemasonry was like about enlightenment. But maybe it was also like, hey, like Church of England or fucking Pope, like, we're, like we got our own thing going on here. I think yeah. I think part of it was a hundred ten percent. Nick Bryant said it perfectly. He's like some of it is 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 optics and yeah. the appearance of things, and he goes some of it is not. There are some people that are, you know, really occultists that are yeah. deadly serious about it. And you know who's who? Very hard to know. No, I mean, who, know? who knows what rank they are? Who's very hard to know <laughs> because me and you have been kept completely out of every circle of you know other than. The comedy, the elite, and, and here's what I, because the elite in comedy, I've been allowed into that circle just seeing some of the, the funniest people in the world, and it's not necessarily what you would think, right? It's right. just not what you would think. It's, it doesn't mean it's better or worse, it's just kind of different. Right. So I, I wonder if you got it, I'm sure the Skull and Bones kind of sucks. I'm sure, because you know what, well, nobody it, it, in Yale is really that good looking. I was walking around looking at Yale, I'm like... These kids aren't that hot because they're smart. They're not that hot. Well, I mean, that, San Diego this, State, this much is, hotter. This is like, you're kind of saying, I know you've dealt with executives and all sorts of people, but like calling the, these people the elite of comedy is like calling Coltrane the elite of jazz. Yeah, he was, but like that doesn't mean he's, like, he's the most talented ever or one of them, uh, but like doesn't mean, like the talent is never the quote unquote elite. It doesn't really go hand in Interesting. hand. Interesting. Like the elite are people like David Geffen who runs the record industry. Well, you're, you understand what I mean. What I'm saying is that yeah. I've had a vantage point to see comedy at its highest levels, but really nothing sure. else. I right. mean, I have nothing no, sure. else. I've read about a lot of other things, but the only rooms that I've ever been in where you've I've seen some of the top people in an industry right. have been in comedy. Sure, but you're still not like in a closed room with Lauren, like and, and no, like, but I'm pretty close. I'm pr no, I know. I, I'm pretty My close. point like, is, I know what those rooms are like. I've heard the stories from those rooms firsthand. Right. Uh, my point is that what I'm yeah. saying is the tentacles into comedy from power aren't really that many, and they don't really get used for that much. And we've yeah. kind of, and like and like as great as you are, you've kind of done yeah. you know a lot of ways thumbed your nose rightfully because you you know they well they're just right. I mean yeah, yeah you're correct. I'm, I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a guy. The industry of comedy 
respects and I'm very funny, but right. I'm also not a guy that they consider to be malleable. Right. And they're, yeah, no, 100%. I'm just wondering when I walk around an institution with Yale, I'm like, I wonder how wrong we have it or how right we are. Uh, That's the question. I think the, they, uh, I think it's just what's interesting to me is they've probably seen some horrific shit or, they're, or they've heard of it. They're, they're one degree separated from some horrific shit, but the level of boredom that they have with You know, it. so like Les Wexner's kid yeah. supposedly is like a bonesman. Right. So like, is that weird? Does anyone turn around and go, hey, like what's going on with dad? Well, probably I think, not. Right? I, 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 I don't think, think he talks his kid about it, but I think no, when, but you're, when, you're his kid, when you're his kid, yeah, that's a kind of succession almost. When you're his kid, you know the stories. You guess what's up. You start piecing things. It's kind of Sopranos where the kids starting to realize that that's right. in the mafia. And like, oh, is that why who the FBI was doing that? Oh, is that who that guy is? Oh, that guy's a cat. Oh, and all kind of. And so as you come of age, you it's not so much that he ever tells you per se, but you kind of go, oh, I probably got to start doing some dirt. You know, I probably got to start fucking Well, it's just interesting. Around. You wonder like what gets talked about in a place like that. Will somebody right. bring it up? Will somebody bring something like that up? Um, well, that's a great point. Cause very like, very rarely. Pro- but look, See, that's they, what I mean. You, but, but they're also all they're all doing drugs, aren't they? I don't. You know. think you would think so, I right? Mean, I would think they're having their year in college. Yeah, they're I mean, they're letting their guard down. Yeah, no, I think they talk about it. I think so, but they, they probably bond over. Yeah, I think my dad might like you know kill people too. Like they yeah, don't really know right. because like why? I don't think those parents ever. Tell the kids that much. Maybe maybe they're older, like when they're 50. Of course they're not telling the kids that much. I'm just wondering what, like, you wonder in that group, yeah. are they Boy Scouts? Are they like, hey, man, I don't know. Shit happens. Like, no, or, no, no, no. They're, they're smart they're, enough they're to not, know. I don't, they're the not thing. that stupid. They don't, Look, they, they don't have the ambition of a true sociopath person. Like, they're, they're a certain kind of sociopath, right. but the kind who would get into that club on his own. But they, they're not, boy, like, look, they, 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 they it's the kind of thing where they think they're like decent guys, but like they've all witnessed date rapes and done nothing. They've all gotten chicks drunk. Like they've all paid poker. Yeah. Many of them, yeah. Well, are many, sure. Okay. Look, what's, I'm saying it's kind but of maybe thing. not. Maybe I'm. I'm wondering if these kids are kind of like cucks. And I, by the way, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that non date rape is cut. But I mean, like maybe they're not doing drugs and partying. Maybe some of them are. Maybe they're, I mean, you know, how, how, how many of them are Malfoy and how many of them are, 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 are uh, Ron from Harry Potter? How I many of them are the much, redhead I kid? Harry Potter. Well, but, I uh, did when I was a kid. Don't give me a face like you're better than me. It was when I was a kid. I watched it. I'm, I'm reading, not reading I'm reading it Animal Farm as a kid. Um, yeah, you're reading Animal Farm. <laughs> you want to see what your future is. Uh, no, I, I, I think most, like, what, look, if you look at drug use for, in general with rich kids, it's like pretty common stereotype that a lot of them end up like, Drug problems. Look, we were talking about like that Robert Kowasaki. My dad got me that Robert Kowasaki whatever book. And like, yeah, it's really hard for rich kids, for instance, to like build wealth on their own and not to be like prized on their family's wealth. But, like, it's hard. So if you're if you're part of that system, I think it's hard for a lot of them to like not fuck around with drugs and alcohol and then like push boundaries. So those parents are always like high power people who aren't paying attention anyway. So like, why wouldn't they be getting into trouble? So the odds of them being Boy Scouts is like- Yeah, that's, that's I'm wrong on that. Yeah, I think so. They're smarter. They're shrewd. Yeah. They see how, the, like they have a sense of like, their dad has a, like, he drops little pearls of wisdom. Like, right. oh, well, you know, Gaddafi thought he was smart too. Right. <laughs> Go clean your room. Right. Whatever. <laughs> so it's like- they, they, I think they get the whiff of it, and by the time they're in college, uh, I think they're piss ants in a lot of ways. And right. I think they're and and they don't really know. I'm not saying that they're qualified to do any of the dirt, real dirt, but I think that I don't. I, I think that they're totally willing and think and think more of themselves than they are, and they they they, they think they're bred for this when it's all horseshit. But they right. think they're bred for it, and that's, right. I think the arrogance of thinking you're bred for it is a lot of it. The like the, the arrogance that, that builds into you makes you into the kind of sociopath that eventually can because all you're really doing is manipulating the wheels of power. Kurt Vonnegut, we must be careful what we pretend to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, really, that's really what it is. Very interesting. It's a very interesting discussion. And and what it, what it really uh, hits home to me is that uh, we, will, we will never, ever, 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 even accidentally... Be welcomed into. What if we get a job at the local pizzeria and we do, we maybe deliver a pizza one day? We bide our time. You know? What if 
we're delivered. Yes. Like in in uh, in, in uh, March of the Wooden Soldiers. We get delivered. We pose as hookers, and we 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 pop out of a box, yeah, or a I, bomb. I we think, pop out of a bomb. I think that, and you know what owns like Deer Island, what owns Columbus, Russell Trust Association. I also think they own Yale. I mean, it's like it's big money and big power players. And you know what? I mean, I got to be honest with you. Is is anything there? more elite than what goes on at Nassau Community College, which is where success starts and continues. You kid, but I mean, I, I, I've heard- It is the top community college in the country. I've heard that like they've they've had like tr- in the past 10 years, like 30 people uh, become like partners at Goldman. Uh, have you ever been to the top flight food court? No. Well, it's phenomenal. It used to have a Taco Bell and I would get a grilled stuffed burrito. It's It's nice. Does Goldman recruit out of Nassau, actually? I was kidding with that. They um, I would say no. Okay. But I'll tell you who does. The Suffolk PD. <laughs> I'll tell you who does recruit out of Nassau Community College. Well, I'll tell you, that Cheesecake campus, Factory. That campus put the Brentwood campus of Suffolk where I attended. To, to shame. shame. Oh, yeah. oh, Ammerman sucks. No, I, I didn't go to Ammerman. I went to Brentwood. Oh, that's still that's Brentwood's worse. Terrible. Brentwood is like, it, they don't even have grass. It's just like yeah. crab grass. And yeah. like, and the buildings are all just like, they look like the, that... Uh, like a Brent Davidian complex or something. Well, it's what the people deserve. With your Waco, I, Texas. I, I, I would like to go back to Yale with you. Yeah. Um, let's I, go now. Let's fucking let's, let's get an Uber. Well, no, I want to go get the Christmas log cake right now. I, I love a Swiss roll Christmas cake. It's so it's it's very and uh, and I, the restaurant that's doing it is keto. Um, are you still keto? Yep. Two He's months. Keto. Keto. I'm wearing smaller pants. He's a keto man with a keto plan. I'm fucking. I'm just getting hard dick and and and, and strong abs. Well, I don't know about that. I haven't seen. The I think abs. it's good for your blood flow. It might be. Yeah. But I also think that you know, there's all kinds of debates about what is good and what isn't good. Look, at the end of the day, people go, "Is that healthy?" I'm like, uh, being massively overweight isn't healthy either. So let me bite the bullet the for a bit. The reality is. Being alive isn't healthy. Yeah. Let's be honest. Being alive <laughs> is not healthy. Right. That's the reality. How many times have I told you to clean up your dick or your... Does the manscape work on a female area? No. This is for men. This is for men. Just like government and business. This is for men. It's a joke. That's a joke. You don't want to have a furry, overly furry dick because people get upset when you pull it out. They don't like it. You pull it out different places, fast food restaurants or a train station, people get angry. But if it's, if it's, if it's well cropped, even if they're upset that you're exposing yourself in public, if you have a well-trimmed bush, people will notice that. Even when they report you, even when they say there's somebody streaking here and they've taken their dick out in front of a large group of people, they'll say, but I will be honest with you, it was trim. It was, you know, it was, you know, it wasn't a mess down there. You know, it's interesting that uh, this type of gentleman who takes that care uh, would choose to expose himself in the way that he did. But I guess he's just proud of what he's done. So that's what Manscaped is about. It's about giving you the confidence to expose yourself in places. It's about basically making sure that your pubic region is in the best shape possible so that you can take your dick out wherever you want, whenever you want, and people are going to be okay with it. You know? Not in a sexual way where you're pressuring someone, but just in a group setting when you could just take your penis out and ask people. Sometimes you don't even have to reference it. You just take, my friend used to take his balls out and just hang them out of his shorts, like through the uh, through the zipper, and he just wouldn't say anything, and his balls would be out. It'd be it's funny. You should do that in your office. It's fun to take your dick out if you like your dick, or if you can make peace with the kind of dick you have. So that's what Manscaped has asked me to communicate to you is that this is certainly about cleaning yourself up using the ball deodorizer, deodorizer using the, uh, what do they call them, Ben? The trimmer, the, uh, the manscaper, the, 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 the chop, the, the lawnmower, correct. The lawnmower, you use the lawnmower 
whether you're a grower or a shower, you use a lawnmower, and then you take your dick out wherever you want. Take it. If Louis C.K. had used this, he wouldn't even be in trouble. You know what I mean? Just take it out, pussy. Take it out. But make sure that, you know, the lawnmower is a good product. I'm telling you. You take extra care. You're not going to nick yourself. You're not going to, you know, have any adverse effects. It's very hard uh, to really take the care and attention. And you don't have to do that. You don't have to uh, worry about hurting yourself. You just have to worry about how great your dick is going to look because that's going to be weird too when you're that happy. You know, you just shave yourself and take your dick out. Take your dick out. Don't start beating it. Just leave it be. Take it out and just let it, let people appreciate it. That's what Manscaped wants me to tell you. They don't want their, the good work of their product to go unnoticed. They want you to take your penis out at your job. That's why they make the product so that you can clean yourself up so that you can expose yourself at work. This is, this is why they have a company. It's so that you can take your penis out at your job and not be afraid that people are going to get weird about it because you are really taken care of down there. You're well-trimmed, you're well-groomed. That is the goal of this company, and that's the goal of this. It is a great product. I like it. I use it. I know people that use it. You need it. If you're a dude, you need this product. Why not buy this one? Support the show. But also, it's, 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 more, it's about more than just that. It's about giving you the confidence to take your penis out at your job. That's what it's about. And, and, and showing it to everybody and saying, hey, this is my penis. You know, obviously, if you work with children, it's inappropriate. Don't do it. Uh, you know, if you work with the elderly, it's also inappropriate. Could give them, uh, you know, I don't know, stroke or something. But if you're with legal age people, take your dick out at your job. That's what I want to communicate to you. 20% off free shipping of the code Tim at manscaped.com. Manscaped.com, 20% off free shipping. The code Tim. These things really work, folks. They really work. Get them. Goodbye. All right, everybody. What a dinner that wasn't. I mean, it was meat. It was meat. A little disappointing. It was a lot of fat. I mean, the thing here's the thing. You asked, I don't want to disparage the woman. She meant well. Um, she was being a little too flirty for my taste. She was. She grabbed your arm. The waitress grabbed your arm. Yeah. Now, when you grab a man like your arm, right? She's taking her life in her hand. I'm getting. I mean, I didn't get hard, but like you'll. But here's the thing: mm -hmm. if you'll, you might just bite. Well, I'm not gonna bite her. Well, no, but I, just as a reaction. Look, I'm just saying. Argh. I'm in a healthy relationship. I'm getting laid. I'm being. It doesn't matter. That's that's neither being, here nor there. I'm being milked. But my point is that, you know, certain points, certain times in my life, I'm more lonely. That human contact, I get a taste for it. Maybe I start seeking it out. You, you don't know, know why who I it am. also was very expensive. Was it you had, what, three bourbons? Two. Oh, just two? Yeah. I think you had three. I had two. Are you sure? She asked me if I wanted a third. I said no. Okay. Two bourbons. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. No, you can have as, as much bourbon as you want. <laughs> um, you know, I think by, you know, her touching you, caressing your arm like that. Yeah. She's taking her life in her hands. I might have bit her. I mean, I probably would have pet her. You it's, just... Worst case, I'm saying, I would have like grabbed her head. Here's what I could... I would have started petting her head. Here's what I could see happening. Yeah. She caressed 
she caresses you. Yeah. You turn around and grab her hand <laughs> and now she automatically knows she made a mistake right. and you look deeply in her eyes and go, I feel something too. <laughs> I feel something too. And she immediately knows. Now, what does she do? Is it like an anaconda? Because when you're an anaconda bites you because its teeth curve backward, you have to yeah. actually force your hand deeper into its mouth mm. before you can get it out. What does she do? Does she just pull away or does she correct you a little bit, even though she's very fearful, terrified for her life. Well, I was, I was, she keep uh, caressing you so you loosen up the thing and then go. Well, I would say, you know what to do. Stick it in deeper. <laughs> Take it deeper. <laughs> um, but no, but like, yeah, she, but she was a little too familiar. We were talking at dinner about the lack of real activism when it comes to Hollywood people. Like, yeah. and because some of it would be a little funny. Right. Like, you know, why isn't like Lizzo a truther? It would be funny if Lizzo, but not a 9-11 truth. No, Sandy Hook truth. It's just Sandy Hook truth. Yeah. Because Lizzo does these things on stage before she performs where she goes, I want you to put your lights up. That light represents the light inside you. <laughs> and I want you to look at yourself and you say, I love you because you're beautiful. And I want you to look around and realize that you are the only one you need. I want you to also ask yourself this question. Why would they build another school <laughs> where the Sandy Hook High School was? Does that make any sense to you? Wait, I don't think it's school, good. Why, well, whatever it was, middle school. <laughs> why would they level a building and build a completely new one? That doesn't make any sense. That's all. Right. And then she would just go into her stuff, you know? Yeah, I just, I just picture like her having that giant ass. And there's also like a, a, a facil, fes, a facsimile. What do you call it? A facsimile? Facsimile of uh, like building seven just collapsing under yeah. her. Ass. I just want you to love yourself. Ladies, love yourself. <laughs> and also realize, let's be honest, that the Mossad planted the bombs in the towers. Your children <laughs> are crisis actors. Your children. Have you ever met anybody that died in Sandy Hook? I don't think so. There are no death certificates <laughs> for any of them. Where are the death certificates for the kids? Okay. <laughs> Jerome. Jerome. <laughs> Little, Drag your ass home. What's his name? Uh, little Zeke or little... I don't know. Little little Zan? Little Zan. Little Zan. Well, he doesn't even know where he is. <laughs> so about Elohim City? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, the crazy shit happened to Elohim. You know, like, this, you know, remember Terrence Yiki? <laughs> he fucking, yo, son just, he dead and shit because he knew that Big Vade did not act alone. All right, now here's my new song. It's called I Love You, Bitch. Who do you think would do worse in a crowd that was there to see Lizzo and Little, little Zan? The Beastie Boys or Dick Cheney? I feel like um, Dick Cheney would do better. No, the Beastie Boys would do a lot better. Okay. Um, That's how I relevant think... they are, though. They, they, don't, they, they might as well be. They're not as relevant. They're, they're <laughs> so relevant. My friend Michelle went to go see them when they were in Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, I just love an interview with Doja Cat where she really starts talking about, you know, like, you know, some, like where she just goes off about the Anunnaki <laughs> and they're like, listen, you know, Juicy's about butts. She's like, yeah, it's about butts, but it's like also about that we were created as slaves to mine for anatomic gold which is the only way that the Anunnaki on their planet is the only way they could breathe. I believe the asshole is your third eye. Your asshole, you can see through your asshole and it's like your pineal gland. You have to open your asshole up because that is where you're going to see the truth through your asshole. That's why it's protected by all that fat, that good, beautiful fat, gelatinous fat. But yeah, none of these fucking people... None of them take it where, where it should go. I mean, they look, they all want to talk shit about like... It's got to... Everybody's woke, but nobody's really woke. Yeah, no one knows. Like, it's like, oh, you know, fucking uh, COINTELPRO. Right. But no one wants to admit, like, you know, who... who, who is the FBI like, I want to thank my manager and my agent. I want to thank all the fans. And I want to thank Larry Silverstein for saying, pull it audibly <laughs> on tape. Before Building 7 came down, he said, pull it. Bitch ain't listening to his dumb wife. <laughs> He's a fucking... Um, oh, my wife's on a skin tag. I gotta get a skin tag. I just want to say this. The dream come true to stand up here in the American Music Awards. 
with so many talented people. I also want to say, let's be honest, if they had a million death camps working 24 hours a day, they never could have got to 6 million. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. You just see people like, what? Like, stop mid-clap, just really confused. Why doesn't that happen more often? Why don't people, why don't people just have like, like, Almost have a mini stroke and say something crazy more often. Why don't the people who've been given houses in Laguna Beach yeah. question the, uh, the... No, you know what I mean, <laughs> though. Like, these people are on so many drugs, a lot of them. Yeah. And somehow they... St- now, this is where people are going to well, message me. They're going to be like, mind control. Duh, duh, duh. But it's like, every now and then, like, Sean Penn would have a slip up. Well, Kanye. Kanye. But it's like interesting that a lot- even, even Kanye, as, as ballsy as Kanye, as much as you don't really give a fuck or supposedly doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. You remember that, like black George Bush doesn't care about black. But even that, he looked nervous. Well, sure, because that was, you know, I mean, listen. I'm saying like, when's the last time you saw someone just really, like when they do have those little, those little spurts, it always comes out. F- no one's just going like dropping knowledge it's, ball, in a ballsy yeah, way. Yeah, well, it's just that, listen, the system works and they're not going <laughs> to jeopardize what they have. But I just find it funny that like, you know, Roseanne goes off, right? Sure. So Roseanne's wild. But she's also mentally ill. I think you got to have a little mental illness to risk so much. You got to realize you're living. Oh, yeah. You're, well, first of all, yeah. like, I think she's a little more freewheeling after she lost the show. Yeah. Not that she wasn't pretty, pretty out there. She was pretty, she was pretty, pretty out, out there, there before. But she's also such a maniac. Yeah. That like. Even wow. though, like, I think a lot of people thought, well, she's so crazy, no one's going to take it seriously anyway. And then she kind of went further than they thought she would. Look, you can argue the whole tweet thing. It did, cut, look, to me, it came off, like, was she wearing the clothes of Dr. Zayas? I get, but, you know, it came off like, ooh, why is she being that racist? Yeah, it didn't yeah. look good. It Point wasn't is, a good look. But in general, when she's like, no, the crystals and the Antioch, I just think she's no one, one gave the, a shit. I just think she's one of the only people that even looks into that. I think a lot of people out there. Into what? Like numbers and all the counting of the numbers? Into it's, anything. It's nonsense. Into anything. She's just one of the only people that looks into a, a, how the government is run. I don't think a lot of people. I don't really know if she is, though. What do you mean? Well, I mean, it's QAnon you, shit. Some of it is. Some of it's not. No. Some of it's not. I listen to her. Like, not the whole thing. But Some of it is is is, is QAnon shit. Here's my thing. I mean, I, lo- I, I mean, dude, I, if I you love- don't want QAnon shit to get popular, I mean, you know, don't kill Epstein. Don't fuck. Sure. You know what well, I mean? Look, I, mean I, lo- I, I love a crazy woman as much as the next guy. Yeah. I, I would- I'm just saying, I don't think that these people even have a clue. Like a lot right. of the people that are in Hollywood that are actors or actresses or big musicians, I don't think they, I don't think they've looked into anything. What do you do? It's so a Kylie Jenner. Because, I mean, look, Kim is one thing. But but Kylie Jenner, does she just think she's like an Egyptian god or some shit? Like, she's just some, like, like does she even realize how fucked? Because I feel like Kim, you know, she had to have a porn tape first. And it was a little, it was a little more messy. And then she had the reality show. But Kylie's like a billionaire. She's like, what, like nine, 16 years old? Yeah. I'm just saying, like, she, she just thinks she's like a fucking reincarnated, like, God. Like, does she even realize how? Because she should be ground zero of knowing how fucked it is because she's part of this weird apparatus. But I feel like she doesn't. I Are you like- asking if Kylie Jenner is questioning things? Like- yeah, if, she, if, she, if she's questioning. Do you think if she, it- I'm asking if she's reading the Nest. The Nest report on Building Seven. I don't think so. No, I but think- seriously, is she is she is she questioning? Like, is she aware? Wow, I'm just getting over. Or is she just dilute, like self delusional? I don't think she point? thinks she's getting over. I think they're a smart family, right? They're shrewd. Right. They they know how to fucking operate, and they're they're just fucking dude. They, I know some people that know them. Just I don't, you know, I've never met them. I don't know anything about them. That's that's I know a few people that know them and just they're all about business. You know, Chris right. Jenner is about business. They're fucking just, you know. So I mean, she started what she's a billionaire because of a makeup line. Yeah, right? I'm not putting it down. I'm not just but no, like, I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, you know, but you do realize like you're you're like you're part of this weird nexus of reality TV and sort of a porn thing, and it's weird, like these sexualized. I mean, it's interesting. Do any of them feel guilty about Trump? That's an interesting question. Like, do any of those people realize that the world that they helped build sure. gave people Donald Trump? I don't really. Well, know. I mean, I feel like he was doing his show before they did, didn't he? I'm talking about the the world. I'm talking about, and I'm not saying that they're responsible. Yeah. I'm just wondering if they ever look at what you know. They, you know, contributed to in the type of celebrity obsessed culture. I mean, Trump comes from 
uh, an obsession with celebrity and celebrity culture. That's sure. all that's left in America. You know, the everything's rotted. The only thing we have left is an obsession with celebrity. You know I me, mean? I got no love for them. Uh, and it'd be easy for me to agree with that. But I kind of feel like Trump is this kind of primal celebrity that's almost like a Barnum and like a, a PT Barnum type. That's exactly that, what they are. And he, that's but, exactly what I'm saying. He would have, he would have resonated in the eighties. Well, he did. But he saying, didn't. He wasn't the president. He absolutely wouldn't have. Uh, Trump is, point. is impossible without the Kardashians. Yeah, without but, people like that. But uh, dude, Trump doesn't exist without the real housewives, without the, the, the onslaught, of reality television where you're watching a show that is fake and you don't care. Huh. You know, let's go, go with me for a second. Yeah, you're watching something that isn't real and you don't care and you still enjoy it. And you know that the, you know that it's heavily manufactured and that, in, 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 you know, best case, heavily manufactured, worst case, completely manufactured. Sure. And you don't care and you still enjoy it because it's real enough. It's just real enough. The houses are real. The outfits are things they might wear. They live in the places that they live. But the actual interactions and things are all heavily, uh, you know, manufactured, arranged. I think without that, and I think that, and everyone focuses on social media, which is absolutely true. You know, social media has right. made us more coarse and callous and the way we deal with each other and process information. But if you look at reality television, the way that that's helped shape culture, I mean, the way that people act on a reality show, the way that they act, right. um, how aggressive they are, uh, that they just fight each other, that they throw wine at each other, and that you enjoy the spectacle of that. Okay, and I mean it's 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 a Roman Coliseum. No, it's a fair point. It's yeah. been around forever. I mean, the way it's just he, the latest manifestation. The of way it. he brought a bunch of sexual assault victims to a debate. A hundred percent. Yeah. No, you're right. This is yeah. a move that is it's a it's a move from the series fina season finale yeah. of your favorite show and reality TV is the world that you know America you know is a reality show right and you know people said that and it's kind of like. I don't want to say hack at this point, but it's cliche. a pretty cliche thing to say, but it is a reality show. People, yeah. you turn on the news now, not to get news. Right. You turn it on for drama. What is the big selling point for reality TV is drama. Well, the weird, here's a weird thing. We're old enough. And we, and you, I think you, you as a kid watched some news as a kid. Like, I did. You remember what the news was like. I remember point. the news. Kids who are like 20 now. Didn't grow up with that at all. They have no idea. It really, like, the news was boring. Nothing. Like, they think the news is boring because they hate, they don't care about anything. Right. But the news used to be, I mean, if you watch the NBC Nightly News, it's still a little dry. Right. But I mean, like, but no one's watching that. I'll tell you this, kids that are growing up now, nothing is boring. Right. The idea that anything is boring, everything yeah. is entertaining unless they turn it off. We used to have like people, I mean, it's still, I guess PBS is still like that. But like, but I mean, you used to have shows, but like PBS, like when you watch PBS now, if, if you're a young person listening, go look, watch the Jim Lear News Hour on PBS. That's right. That's what like was most- was a corpse. Yeah. And that's, and, you, and he's dead Dude, now. Compare, but compare, compare, ready? Yeah. Charlie Gibson, Sam Donaldson, right. Cokie Roberts. The most you got- was uh, what's his name? The McLaughlin group, and he was still a fucking like yeah. geriatric. John McLaughlin Bro. was a wallflower compared yeah. to any of the people now. Compared to fucking Tommy Laren, right? Compared to Alex Jones, compared to uh, you know anybody. I mean, even a maniac like Pat Buchanan, he's still sitting there most of the time, not saying crazy shit. Right? I mean, compare, he's like responding to questions. Compare that to Bill O'Reilly. Compare yeah. that to Hannity and Combs. Compare like, Bill, like Pat Buchanan would just be like. Well, no, I think he's just not like, he'd just be explaining the answer. And then sometimes he would say, the whore. But, you know, whatever you do. The whore. Yeah. The whore. But, I mean, like, that's the thing. And he was a clown. But, I mean, still, like, it is the, the, the level of theatrics that the news has become. Well, part of it, I think, is that, you know, 24 hour news, CNN came in in the 1990s with right. the Iraq war. And then, like, the OJ Simpson trial changed a lot of it. People, that was the first news story that I right. think ran round the clock, and then we, we've we started the process of becoming a tabloid. I feel like that Nancy Grace really was the final level of it. It wasn't good. It, I mean, she, became, she was maybe the. I think the final level is I'm Donald Trump, and I take the oath of office. Well, fair enough. Not as far as like 
Because be, even even with Greta, even Greta um, Susteren, yeah, Van Susteren, she was much better than me. before the plastic surgery. Right. I'm saying, but like that, like she like made her name off of Court TV in the OJ trial. But she was still like, oh, she used to be a journalist, and she's kind of a respectable person. Well, it, this whole idea that you had point counterpoint, right? Like the politis the politicization of the news to where it was like, this guy says this, I say that, point, counterpoint. There are no facts. There's just interpretations right. of a story. And then the idea that you had two people on either side of it. And then, then you had two networks on either side of it. Then you had Fox and MSNBC. Right. And then, you know, things just splintered into a million different versions of, of reality. And yeah. now, so it's interesting, like, where what is the next iteration? Because we're a tabloid country. We're, right. we're a celebrity-obsessed uh, culture. Where does that go? Like, where do people get totally turned off by that eventually? And what is the... Because here's what I'm watching now. I'm starting to kind of watch, like, Jeffree Star, who's this trans, very wealthy Mm -hmm. guy on YouTube. is huge. And, like, I I, I don't watch it, but I, I I, I, like, try to keep tabs on what... What's going on on like you? Because in LA, it's hard to ignore like the hype beasts, these kids that buy sneakers and right. shirts. They and stole they, my phone. Yeah, they stole your phone. I try to do that on stage when <laughs> I do your accent and everything. Where it's like, well, I was like, I'd buy a goddamn hype beast. <laughs> um, but the the reality is, there's 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 an interesting level of materialism. Like Jeffrey Star and Shane Dawson just released this conspiracy theory, I believe, like line of makeup. What? It, it, yeah, I'm not kidding. They they did this thing on YouTube called conspiracy theories where they investigate conspiracy theories. I don't know if you're familiar with this. This is a no. this this guy Jeffrey Star is I I mean look him up. Look up Jeffrey Star. I'm, I'm, we're talking about massive. We're talking about in, in terms of YouTube numbers. You know, maybe one of the biggest YouTubers. So Jeffrey Star, just to give you an idea, his channel he got 16.7 million subscribers. Okay, how much? How much? 16.7 million. So what? Uh, and now Shane Dawson, who's like... Oh, wow. This is, this is a trans person. Yeah. And then Shane Dawson, you know, you're looking at his channel. He's got 23 million subscribers. So then he did this. They do this thing. You know, conspiracy theories. And See, there was makeup. Is it Jeffree Star approved? So here's, here's, <laughs> here's what's interesting about all this stuff. This kind of rampant materialism, right? Which I've noticed, like, well, there's also that makeup kid. What's that guy's that that, that guy's name? That young kid? Yeah, I don't know. But he he gets like seven million like viewers. There seems to be a real obsession, yeah, with makeup, with accessories, with clothing. That, by the way, there was always fashion when I grew up. There right. was always like the idea of Gucci and Prada and whatever. Hilfiger, yeah. You know, and 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 then there was always styles. There was, you know, I, I grew up with like baggy jeans and eventually it was Jenkins. Like, I, materialism. I, I, I had a starter jacket. Yes. The materialism isn't new, but there's this new iteration of it. Right. And it's very interesting. And I wonder where that goes. Well, here's, I mean, look, it, it, it's crazy. I wonder if, because look, you watch these guys yeah. and like and these makeup kids and like, the plastic level of it. And like, right. and like, I don't think most of the people watching it are like, you, when, when I watch that video, I feel sick. Not because the guy is like, you know, has style or is glamorous, but just like, it's all so fake and, and weird. And I get, I get, I get depressed. Right. Like, is this is what kids are like. I don't think kids, I think it's just more like, I don't think, I think a lot of the kids are just watching it and going like, yeah, they're not really, but that being said, like it's so fake, it's yeah. so overdone, it's so over the top. Um, what, wh- yeah, what is the attraction to that? Is it because there's such an emptiness all around us that the idea that something yeah. is so almost like it's like a, a fairy tale, or it's like the, the way people are made up? It's like it's they're so well. Look at pop music, right? They now, almost look mystical. I don't know. They're they're they are they is is this the a thing of is this a, an offshoot of comic book movies? Maybe and I don't know. I mean, look at pop music, right? Yeah, and the way we like when our generation had it. And or you come to LA, you are opening for Doja Cat, of course. A yeah. lot of people think that I'm lying about that, but you are opening for Doja. No, I've been asked Doja. Yeah. How how did you meet her? Well, I, I was at an Arby's. Yeah, and I was throwing up on, in the bathroom. And now, why? Was, what were you, was it? Was it bad meat or was it too much? I think I say too much. Okay. And she's banging on the door like I gotta take a shit. Right. And I come out and I go. You look 
you're famous or something? And she's like, bitch, I'm Doja Cat. Oh. And like, Tim Dillon talks about you. Oh. And she goes, what that fat, the greasy motherfucker? Yeah, she said faggot. Yeah. Don't, don't put your tongue back in your mouth. I saw what she I said. I said fat. But, uh, well, we 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 got some uh, some drinks and uh, get some Hennessy, a little bit, got a little Henny, <laughs> yeah, a little Henny. So you got a little Henny with her. <laughs> and uh, Doja Cat drinking Henny and paper cops and Arby's. Yeah, exactly. And then she said, "Why don't you know? Are you going to do music? What are you going to do? I'm going to do my synth music, but also like I I, I make electronic music. Everyone yeah. knows that. And I'm going to do like spoken word over it. We got to do a show in L.A. where you just do synth music and spoken <laughs> word. I'm not even kidding. I'll I, do it. It'd be amazing. Um, um so here, what, so my, what are you uh, trying to say? All right, so we grew up, right? Let's look at in the generation, but the boomers too. Yeah. So look, the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, and like they were good musicians, right? But then you have like the generation after, like the Van Halens, and the, I'm saying like they were like the, we grew up in the '90s with grunge, Nirvana, right? And like and Nirvana was kind of legit, like they was a like, troubled guy, is not. But all the other bands around them, there was a definite. Um, Currency and authenticness, whatever you want to refer yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, the the right. And we and like whether it was horse shit, but we, there was a value to that, and we and you needed to have it. And even pop music at the time wasn't as much that, but like Millie Vanilli, like when they found that they lip synced, they were shunned, right? right? And that's gone now. Like yeah, the, the, like anyone caring if anyone like like I'm not even saying that no one's authentic but that no one cares if you are that's not part of the deal maybe in country music part of uh, yeah no I, I think you're absolutely right part of the attraction to a lot of these people is that they do style themselves as I don't want to use the word freaks in a negative way but like people that are so over the top right and so out of this world that you wouldn't necessarily like they're glamorous, they're luxurious, as your your buddy contra points, opulence. Like right. the idea of it just being over it's just overkill. You know what bugs me about it? You look at Ziggy Stardust or like Aladdin Sane, like Bowie's different looks and, yeah. and, and personalities. And he was doing it in a time when like no one necessarily wanted it. It was weird. Like like so much of this stuff now, it's like no one even like there's no one said. I mean, yeah, I'm sure like there's fucking pastors out there going, "This is the devil." And Do you think part of it is that people have actually gotten pretty boring, and they're 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 actually trying to figure out a way to seem unique and different, hundred percent. But that that social media and technology has kind of flattened yeah. people, whereas people are, and 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 they're corralled very easily into all liking one thing so that individuality has kind of been destroyed. Well, so the me. only way to do it is to just paint yourself. I mean, I, I see it myself. Like I, 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 and some of it's just, you know, me being a, a, a blowhard idiot, but you know, but I'm a, I'm a more relatively nuanced person and I'm not the, and I have good tweets sometimes and, I, and then people, you know, stuff resonates. But Sir, I'm saying, when I, you instruct your client to answer the question, <laughs> the question was, when was the last time he saw the victim of this crime? He has said he's a nuanced person and that he has good tweets. The question was, when is the last time you saw the victim of this crime? Narbus. All right, keep going. No, my point is like, yeah, no, it like it's what's rewarded, it, generally speaking, is more monosyllabic or more like things that are just kind of uh, more digestible. So that's one element of it. But it's also, we were talking before, like, yeah, look, Lizzo's great. And like a lot of these people, like, Doja Cat's, yeah, she's good. But like, it's not Whitney Houston. Right. And then it reaches Franklin. Like, right. there isn't like, I don't know where. Because well, so much of it now goes into the marketing. A lot of it is the marketing and it's right. not so much. I mean, I mean, I think it's interesting. And I think, so what you what you see now is you see it on the left and the right, you see like these discredited uh, ideas, whether it's communism or whether it's fascism or whether it's, you know, white supremacy or whether it's these Jew conspiracy theories like. Jewish. Jewish conspiracy <laughs> theories. Sorry, <laughs> but they all come back. We all, you know, and there's something interesting about the idea that maybe we are reaching the end of a stage, mm -hmm. and that because technology has gotten that we are going to, you can technology has become so, you know, powerful that the next stage of our life is going to be unlike any that we could imagine. Like it's not going to be, because we seem to be in a loop mm -hmm. where we're just trot we have the same problems we had a hundred years ago, other right. than the, you know, that have been made better by by technology or medicine or whatever. Yeah. We have the same issues with each other. We have the same problems. We have a lot of the same conspiracy theories. We have the same fears. We have the same 
at, at maybe at a certain point, it's just we're 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 on the verge of taking that next leap into whatever the future is going to be, and it it might be where the human era is over. I mean, it's interesting because I'm never going to be one of those guys like who. Oh, like is it too much? Uh, not opulence, but like uh, permissiveness in society and all this shit. But there is something weird that happens when the permissiveness, or whatever you want to call it, or just the the lack of taboo in society means that art has no more power. There right. is there is no potency to art ever anymore. Right, like, there's really almost nothing you can do to shock. And not that you want like shock effect in art per se, but that uh, like you like even South Park, which is great and still and still brilliant, isn't really shocking people. Which and like that like and you there's well, there's no stink to things. I, I would say that it's I, I think it's a great point about the permissiveness in society, but it's also what happens when the satire becomes the news. Like right. Trump is the president. Um, Kardashian, Kim Kardashian is at the White House campaigning for. Well, that, that's more. Like, I mean, the, the over the overstimulation and and the over. Yeah. yeah, there isn't. I mean, all of the possibilities or many of them have been realized. Yeah. I mean, we are at a point now where to to satirize or you can't heighten anything anymore. We've talked about that, right? And you you just wonder at a certain point where it's like, how you know the human race in general. It's like you know at you know. Are we at the furthest we can go? I mean, is look, there's different types of totalitarianism, right? Right. Like the Nazis, clearly evil. Stalin, evil. The Roman Empire killed a lot of people. Yeah, but I feel like it was a little less like you know race driven. Maybe, okay. maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. About it, well, regardless, I'm not promoting it. But is this kind of almost a natural like like almost like the Matrix? There was a whole when he meets that fucking the Colonel. The Colonel Sanders guy. My point is, is a cyclical. It's this thing of like, yeah, you, like you know, society will get to a point where every, every, because this is kind of reminds you of Rome and Caligula in a way, and Nero, and that's so well. Much, we like, here's the problem: we, we as as biological beings are yeah. just not efficient. Right, we're just not right. And the phone that we hold in our hand, all the technology around us is so much more efficient than we are. But we're, we're kind of gumming up the system yeah. with our stupid ideas, right? right. With our racism, our, our whatever. We're just gumming it up. We're fighting with each other. It just is what it is. At a certain point, we're going to have to be made more efficient. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't know if that's going to be- Efficient for uh, what? Meaning that I think- as AI gets more powerful and as automation gets more powerful, there's probably going to be ways to fuse with that technology to make us potentially more productive and efficient. I'm not saying this is going to be a good thing. I just don't get if that's the goal. It's and, not the goal. I think it's just going to happen. But wait, but the best, it's already it, happened. But the best the outcome that the people in power are cool with or would be cool with. Sure. And we know who's in power, really, from the end of the day, and like what they're into, and what, right. what they're willing to allow. Like, why are they? What what keeps us around at that point? Oh, oh, I don't know much. <laughs> I don't think we. I just are they gonna really are they really gonna pay for that fat guy at Walmart to get melted with a computer? No, I, I mean, and it's part of why I think you see the gates being. You know, every house is a fortress, and yeah. people have their own private security. And I think part of this is the long con of how exactly do we let large sections of the country fail? Do you think they hope? You, you told yeah. me before how LA, like cholera is coming back. and this Oh, story. all of those do things. Do you think that's, uh, I'm not going to go as far, although I would, I just, I'm just not going to, that they're doing it on purpose. But do you think they're kind of actively hoping that disease is spread? That, like, I don't know what they're that, doing. That, 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 that this whole, four, like, uh, I wouldn't say that, but I think they are making contingency plans yeah. and have been for a very long time to just allow large, and listen, Youngstown, Ohio, Flint, Michigan, Detroit. This is not Bridgeport, right. Connecticut. None of this is speculative. And to be clear, it's this is not been, about reptilians, control right. population. This is about, it's not about saying they're right, but it's about saying we know that there's a certain lack of humanity in the yeah. ruling class. And at that point, like, why would they keep around the poor? This is part of why you yeah. don't want this kind of society because yeah. this is what it leads to. The reality is you look at what's going on and you say that these, the, you know, they've already let cities, Detroit did not have to fail. That's number one. Sure, it didn't have Detroit to. did not have to fail. Uh, I mean, globalization didn't have to go down the way it went. All of it didn't have to happen. Yeah. The, the point is that there's a certain callousness that the ruling elites have towards human beings. It's just, it's just not, right. I don't see, now you also have tech 
Now, the guys that are at the head of these tech companies a lot, and I've been reading about them recently, a lot of them, you know, they're utopians. They do believe that they're making the world a better place. Yeah, for who, though? Well, correct. <laughs> now, when you have those two things happen, when you have the callous, cold-hearted, uh, you know, very pragmatic in a, in a, in a, in a you know, sinister way, elite, yeah have all these tools and all this technology, you know, what happens? I think the only thing that happens is they let large sections of the country fail. Right. And most people will then at that point flock to cities for work. And those cities will become mega cities, uh, well, which what? is why the Pentagon studies fighting. What's it going to be like to fight urban warfare in, in mega cities? These are things that the Pentagon studies. Sure. Because they assume that by 2040, the populations of Los Angeles and New York have grown exponentially. But like, they're not really, like you look at how New York is growing, quote unquote, and it's growing with these like massive towers for the rich. But like, they're, they're really not expanding where like, I mean, I guess the suburbs are more like, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like there's a ton of jobs in the city that are being absorbed into the city from Detroit, from like, it's more like people, those people, most of those people are just out of work or in fast food or whatever. hundred percent. I think what happens and what they're imagining that will happen is Detroit is, is, is not going to be a rarity. It's going to be one of many. Things. Right. And I'm making the and point that, that we're yeah. not, I don't, I, I think having super cities is, seems like an optimistic outcome compared to what we've seen. No, I mean, super cities, I don't know what you mean. I'm talking about, you will have like very crowded, mm -hmm. I mean, similar to Asian cities where they're very crowded and, and the majority but of people, why, who's flawed? Look, live people in poverty. Who, people who've been pushed out of their work aren't going to flock to New York because like, that's the last place you they want to go. You can't afford starving. to. But that, they, they, they can't afford to live, live there. They live in slums. They live in slums. Go go to Hong Kong. They live in slums. The Mumbai, they live in slums. I'm telling you, the, the, sure, the future I, yeah. of this is from the Pentagon. This is not from me. This is from the well, Pentagon. They, well, they, they were right about Iraq. No, I mean, well, I, I'm telling I mean, you, I'm telling yeah. you, I'm telling you. There, people are, are go, do you want to go to East New York and you want to go to these places and you want to see how I used to live right next to Brownsville. So you know that poor people live in New York. I don't understand what you're poor saying. Poor people, but poor people didn't like mass migrate to of New York. Of course they did. They've been doing it for 200 years. Why do you think they're what? fucking... Poor people have been coming to New York City forever to, to work. Well, immigrants come through New York, right? That's part of it, but you, you, have, you have all well, kinds came of came through New York. You have all kinds of people that grew up in horrible places that come to New York in Rust Belt towns that are shot. Where do you think they go? Well, Youngstown, sure. Ohio. They come here. Absolutely, there are people. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, there are people that are here to be waiders. I don't, I don't know what you're saying. New York is uh, is is a whole entire population made of people that escaped from somewhere else. All right, I see what you mean. Okay. So if if all of those things, if if if, if those areas continue to not be able to support populations, they're gonna come here. They're gonna go to L.A. They don't have a choice. Right, but I'm saying like at a certain point, it's just the jobs will be filled. Well, yo, yeah. Okay. That was your right. argument? Yeah, no, the jobs are filled now. Right. They're going to live on the street. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you... What do you think I... Do you think, I, do you think, so I, you do you think I think the Illuminati is like, but how are... Where are they going to work? But I'm, no, like, when I envision they're going to live in tent cities. They're going to live in Hoover. Okay, so when we say super cities, we just mean cities with a lot of homeless people yeah, in them. Yeah, dummy. I okay. don't mean super cities like they're fucking super, you fucking <laughs> retard. But well, that's a weird I mean, term. They're, they're mega didn't... cities. They're... Go, go to Hong Kong. These there are there's large underclasses right. in all of these cities. You just don't see them. They're in New York. People just don't see them. They don't no, sure. See, and, yeah. and, and 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 they're they're going to. It's gonna be more and more prevalent as time goes by. I'm sure. telling you because also there's no services that come here for government services. We have more services here. Okay. California has more services. Don't they push everyone upstate? They tried. They will continue to maybe try. That was back, but still, there are still more services here right. than you're going to get uh, in a rural part of the country. Why don't people just start farming again? <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, we used to like honestly though. It's like it's it, you, you wonder like, like the soil is going to be poisoned. But it's also Monsanto. It's just yeah, the people people. A lot of them cannot farm. They're like not allowed to. There's right. all kinds of laws and regulations that prevent them from doing it. And nobody has those fucking but skills. But that's the weird thing. Well, I'm really getting that. I know it was a silly thing to say. But it's like, the weird thing is you're watching this all happen and there's no reason why it has to, is my point. 
Like we have resources still. Well, no, there's we no have reason pe- why. Yeah, because yeah. because rich people want to take everything. Yeah, that's why it's happening a lot. You know, they they don't they they're not content with having a hundred million dollars. They want a hundred billion. They're not content with, uh, you know, they they want uh, this is the, the 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 level of consolidation in these in these major industries like media and finance. I mean, it's just wild. Well, look, I mean. We're acting pessimistic, but Trump might clean the swamp. I mean, oh yeah, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna, he's gonna drain the swamp. <laughs> he's gonna drain the swamp. None of it has to happen, but all of it's going to happen. Right, it's going to happen for the same reason that, like, you know, your family. You could get along better with your family. Right. But you don't. And it's your family. Sure. So the idea that a guy who's just been raised, you know, completely wealthy is going to give a fuck about somebody, it's just not going to happen. It just right. doesn't happen. You know, it's just not going to happen. And and all people can really do at this point is get on a cam and start flicking their bean. Yeah. And hope to God. Let's work. Hope to God that somebody's into that. Hope to God that you're a fetish. I would love to. You hopefully you're a fetish. Look, you have a bigger bigger following now than what we were doing. Yeah, I think we should start a, a website. I need your help. Uh, maybe Ben could help with it. Yeah, I, I, I want to be a cam girl. I want you to be a cam girl. Yeah, because you listen, folks. The, the way out is being a fetish. Right. The way I'll, out is going to be a fetish. I'll eat things that you tell me to muck eat. Mukbang. A mukbang. Putting a roasted chicken in your ass. I'll wear a thong. That's going to be the way out. Yeah. That's going to be the way out. I'll suck all sorts of dildos. You're going to have to do it all. Yeah. You're going to be dressed up in Jeffree Star makeup. <laughs> I would like to see you get- I should do makeup tutorials. You should do makeup tutorials. You should get glamorous. We should glam wow. you up. That this would be, be great. A- when you come to LA, maybe we'll glam you up. Yeah. You'll be a real glamorous. I'll be a, 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 a glamour pig. I mean, gender is dead. Everything's, it doesn't matter. Who gives a fuck what I got in my pants? It doesn't matter. Nobody. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're just going to be fucking glam. I mean, honestly, sex seems passe to this generation, doesn't it? Yeah, nobody's it's, fucking. No one seems to want to fuck. Nobody's fucking. And I get it, because I like fucking, but I could also, you know, if I, if I had to, I could, yeah, let's just fucking get glamorous. That's what it is, man. People are coming in different ways now. Yeah. You know? So much of it is just, you know, performative. Everything's performative. You just want other people to validate you. Sex is like, you know, it's earthy. It's, it's, it's like it's old gross. school. You it's stick gross. something in your nose and you start coming. It's fine. Yeah, That's- you just people want to be glamorous. Now. Yeah. They just want to be, you know. And the ass isn't even sexual anymore. It's just an affirmation. That Lizzo thing. Yeah. It's just affirmation. Yeah. It's just, that's not, no one's jerking off that big ass. I want you to put your lights in the sky. <laughs> Those lights represent love. They represent the love that I want every, inside of every single one of you. Okay. And I just want you to, I want you to tell me one thing. I want you to tell me why a bunch of Jewish art students were in the World Trade Center. They were bomb technicians for the Mossad. They put <laughs> bombs in those towers and they fell. Let's go. Why a man great? Cause it gotta be great. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Uh, please forward your complaints to my agent manager. I'm kidding. Where can people find you? Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ray Kump. Uh, on my Twitter, you can you, you come podcast. Check that out. It's back now. It's back. It's back. So is our love is disgusting. Great new episodes of both podcasts. Uh, you can donate to my Patreon. You can find it on my Twitter, uh, my Patreon feed. Uh, but yeah, check me out. I got all sorts of me and Lucy Steiner who make our love is disgusting. We're also starting to make sketch videos. So we're gonna be a YouTube presence probably. So 2020 is gonna be big for the Cump universe. Go subscribe to all that. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Tim Dillon Show. That is the channel, Tim Dillon Show. My other channel I do nothing with. Tim Dillon Show on YouTube. All our sketches, our podcasts are going to be re-uploaded when we take the ads out that YouTube may or may not have a problem with. We don't want the channel taken down. So go subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to me on Apple Podcasts, please. Also on Instagram, Tim J. Dillon, D-I-L-L-O-N. Twitter, Tim J. Dillon, timdillancomedy.com for all the dates. We have just announced Austin, Texas. I'm going to be there in January. It's fucking great. I'm really excited about that. So if you are in Texas, I'm telling you right now, don't be stupid. 
Fucking go and come see me. January 15th through the 18th, I'm going to be at Cap City. Cap City. Cap City in Austin. It's one Big. of my favorite clubs. Okay. Also, I'm going to be in January. I'm going to be at Magoobies in Maryland, right outside of Baltimore, Maryland. I'm going to be up in Toronto at a, at a, at a great uh, theater. I'm going to be uh, at the House of Comedy in in uh, Arizona, I'm going to be in Minneapolis. The same. I mean, you just got to go timdillandcomedy.com. All the dates are there. Grab the tickets. We have links to all of the places I'm going. It's easy to navigate. Um, and yeah, like I said, if you are in a secret society or you were tapped to be in one and you didn't choose to be in one, very interesting. Or if you have a friend that was in one, DM me on Instagram or DM me on Twitter and, and, and again, many of you will do this as a prank, but I don't care because I will find the real one. Doesn't matter. Many of you are going to be like, oh, I was in, I was in, da, 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 you fat. I know, we right. get it. It's a funny joke. It's a funny joke. Those guys aren't fucking us. Whoa. We're not letting them fuck us. You're not fucking Only us. Only legit. Legit people yeah. that are in a secret society that want to tell us how it works and also want to sacrifice us. Let's right. keep the conversation open. Yeah. Let's keep it open. I will. I have an agent manager. I will put you in contact with them if you want to sacrifice both me and Raymond. Put us on spikes and roast us like guinea pigs. I just want to feel something. A hundred percent. Goodbye. <laughs>